We've asked a lot of all, a lot of you this week. Uh, this is day three of four of studying Northeast Ramapo. Uh, and I, I give you all my sincerest thanks for coming out again. My, I, I know many of you. My name is Michael Klatsky. I'm the director of planning and zoning in the town of Ramapo. And I'm very happy that we finally had the opportunity to start kicking off our strategic planning efforts. Uh, we're starting, as you know, many of you know, I've seen many familiar faces tonight. Uh, we've kicked off the plan in Northeast Rampo, which is the area that our office believes is the most vulnerable to development. And we want to make sure that any future development is designed the right way, according to the best design principles, and really learning from our past as a, you know, as a town of Rampo and uh, building better as we move forward in the future. Um, so some of our timeline as we go, I know many of you have been curious today, you've been asking about what about the rest of the town, what about Muncie? Uh, our regional uh, metropolitan planning organization, which receives federal transportation dollars, uh, known as NUTEC, they're currently undertaking a study of Muncie, uh, the Route 59 corridor, uh, starting in Spring Valley and ending in Airmont Road. And they're in the process right now in their data collection. And they anticipate being completed around January and February. And around that time is when we plan to kick off the study in that area next. And then we'll tie this one into that one as we move forwards. And tonight, uh, we're very happy to present to you, uh, our, our design team has spent the past 24 to 48 hours listening to your thoughts, your visions, and your, all your ideas. And I know there's some, uh, some of my colleagues in the town are with us tonight as well. You know, we have the Overcoles team, we have the Burgess team, as our consultants. Our deputy supervisors are in the back. And we have our building inspector here tonight, and uh, Ian Smith here in the front. And we're all here to hear your concerns, hear your <coughs> thoughts, hear your vision. We really want to understand what, what, we, what you believe works. We want, to get, we want to make sure this is a community-driven process. Our consultant team has been, as you, if you've come in here earlier today, you've seen them in the back uh, with all sorts of design software on their computers, literally uh, you know, with one ear to the computer, the other ear listening to you about what's working, what's not working, what's great, what's terrible, what we love, what we don't. And tonight, uh, Jason King and uh, his team, they're going to present some amazing visions to you from what, how they've interpreted your ideas. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Great. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, so I'm Jason King with Dover Cole. Uh, it's been a great conversation over the last few days, and we've learned a lot. I, I have emails from you I still have not gotten to. I apologize for that. We really, I didn't check the email. We've been focused on this work, and, um, and we're excited to show it to you. So as you'll remember, the area that we're in is the Northeast Ramapo area. Um, and we created a map where we zoomed out a bit. <laughs> you okay? All right. <clears throat> um, it's an interesting area, right? It's an area that still has green. It's an area that still has a rural feel. Um, when the sun sets over those mountains, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and we've gotten a chance to hike some trails with you and take a couple bike rides and, uh, and get to understand this place much, much better than we did when we first arrived. You remember we did the hands-on design session on Tuesday and we had a lot of people. We've been in this room, we've had various meetings. Remember, this isn't a final presentation. We're gonna come back in December. We're gonna do this again Probably not in, in this complex. I understand this complex has a lot of negative feelings for a lot of people. So we're going to try to find another. We're going to try to find another venue. It's going to come down to what we advertise. We don't want people to show up here and it's the wrong place. But we're going to try to find another venue. We heard you about that. You'll remember that this is a process uh, in which we are going to, over the next six months, continue to redraft and draft and come back and show stuff as we work toward the formal approval process in the spring. So you're gonna have a lot of opportunities in order to give input. At the end, I'll give you the website address that has all this information. We'll put all this up. You can send people to the link with the information. Next week. What's that? It's not live yet, it's under construction. It'll be everything will be available next week. All right, next week, the website is, is under construction. Do you have its address? Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, they, they just started constructing it. So the website address is new to me. But Ben, you probably know it. Ramapo.org backslash envisionramapo. Ramapo. 
No punctuation between envision and room? Correct. Yep. Rampo.org backslash envision remote pulp. And I'm going to put that up. When we finish with the presentation, it, we'll put it up. We'll keep it up for people and to get familiar. It'll be a link off the main page and the website, too. So. You could always just go to Town of Ramapo. There's a, currently a link that will take you. Right, so we had over 50 people. You know, you're working on those maps. You're giving us your ideas. Then our studio uh, was swamped these last two days. It has been great. Um, over 155 people have come in. We've ha we got to have the one-on-one -on -one conversations that are so critical for the out-of-town consultants to learn about the local area. And we so appreciate the time that you all gave us. We had formal meetings. Remember, there was a table right there. We went to our steering committee. We went to the town. We went to a couple towns. Um, in total, we had uh, several, many meetings, town and staff officials, village staff and event officials. We were talking to religious institutions, various stakeholders, people who love trails, chamber of commerce people, developers, infrastructure providers, landowners, the superintendents were part of this. They're still here. Um, at, in total, we had over nearly, actually, if I count all of you on this one, we had nearly 300 people like in this room with kind of conversations, live interactions. And for a community this size, which was given so little notice about these meetings, no notice, um, no notice no about notice. these meetings, that's usually how it is. 10 no. days notice about this meeting, that's not enough. But look, I just, want to, I just want to tell you that, I, you know, you guys came out. This is a this is a trip. Remember, we talked to a lot of people, all kinds of people. Um, all right, so now we'll get to to what we heard. And now these are the consensus items, and that's important. That's an important distinction. There are a lot of issues that this community has that are possibly unsolvable, um, and this is a unique community, and its problems are unique. Its challenges are unique. So there were things that we talked about that I, we don't know how to, how to be, even begin to address. But there were items that we were able to get everybody on board with. And I hope you feel that, that some of this that you're gonna see are consensus items. We did the one word cards, you remember? One word that comes to mind about Northeast Ramapo, now and in the future. Some of you have seen this many times. The, the largest word that appeared on Tuesday night was rural. Rural and vulnerable. And that, I feel like, you know, that's what, that's how people were feeling when they started this process. You see open space, you see suburban, you see not dense, you also see corrupt. We understand that a rift in the community was created by some uh, yeah. jailbirds. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to find something a little softer, but yeah, jailbirds work. Bad players. Absolutely. One more that comes to mind about Northeast Ramapo in the future, preservation was the largest thing. Well, uh, you know, this is like at least a third of people saying preservation. You see pastoral, you see, and you see some new things added. You see suburban, you see bike paths, strong public schools, uh, and you see main streets, right? That's just some of them. If I have to sum up the very broad conversation that we all had about everything into just five big ideas for the sake of a 45 minute presentation tonight, um, these are the five big ideas we're going to talk about. We heard preserve and protect natural lands. Promoting environmental sustainability, important word, sustainability. Uh, lands bought for protection should be protected, protect the aquifer. Mitigation fees for parks and preservation, wellhead protection, endangered species. Let's move to electric and to solar, new water body buffers, large lot zoning on sensitive areas. We heard improve traffic circulation, or at least don't make it any worse. We heard create local main street centers and add jobs and rateables. And rateables is, um, rateables, you know, property taxes have spiked in the last six months in the community. If you, get, if you look at your tax bill, you'll notice it's, it's expensive. And you know, a lot of people uh, feel like if you keep continuing on that trend, they're, they're just not gonna be able to stay in their houses. You add $1,000 or $2,000 more a year to a tax bill, and that's a lot for people. So we talked about rateables and the tax base. More commercial, more jobs, would pay taxes so that way homeowners didn't have to. Affordable and complete new neighborhoods for everyone. Neighborhoods for everyone is, is interesting, right? And affordable and complete. If it continues to just be 
apartments here and apartments there and all those people in those apartments have to drive the same roads to the same places the traffic's going to get worse and worse when you build build well or, or don't build at all is what we were told build complete places where people can walk and bike and their jobs and their destinations will be located there instead of everybody competing for the small roads add new public facilities schools libraries trails and small parks all right we're going to do this three times. This is the first one. You everyone have a keypad polling device? If you don't have a keypad polling device, raise your hand. All right. If you haven't done this, the way this works is you have the device. Um, you ask your question, like, did you attend any of the SHRA events this week? And you push one for yes, two for no. And I can see the res it's responses are going. Uh, if you push the button, the green light appears, maybe red light, maybe yellow. Don't worry about the color light, it's as long as the light appears. If you have no light. If you have no light. If you have no light, uh, we'll give you a different one. Okay. All right. It doesn't stay on. What's that? Oh, it'll just flash for just a second. A little flicker flash of oh, color. No, no, no. Will it only accept one answer if it's a couple of times? Right, exactly. Only accepts one answer. And the last one, if you change your mind, if you say, yes, I've been here, wait, no, I haven't, this, the second one that you push is the one that it'll record. The last one you push is the one it'll record. All right, we've got over 40 responses. And then what happens is I set the this, uh, the timer. All right, so oh, this is great. 70% of people have been here, have been part of this. But it's also cool to see 30% of people have it, newcomers. Terrific. This is a complicated question. Well, you know, there was only in the newspaper yesterday. Right. I'm sorry to hear that. We'll do better on the next set of events. You didn't change this question. No, we didn't change this question. I'm just wondering. I'm getting a red light. You're getting a red light. Try it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. The red light actually works also. It, it just means you can't see that you're responding. Mm -hmm. All right, I start the timer. Forty-seven responses. All right, so this is interesting. The people in the uh, in general, we're seeing more unincorporated Ramapo, Muncie Hillcrest people, 40%. We've got people from the West, we've got people from the East, people from the South, and other, what are some of the other places you come from? <coughs> Bella, Bella, That's right, okay, great. How long have you lived or worked in the area? You can respond? Yeah, you can respond now. Don't worry, there will be different, I promise there's gonna be different questions. This is just really to find out who's in the room and to compare, you know, who's, that one's not lighting up? All right. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, no, this one isn't, you're right, this one's not lighting up. If, if it doesn't flash at all, then... <laughs> all right, so let's see. This is interesting. Most of the people in this room have been here for a long time. 66% have been here over 20 years. Can you imagine that? Nearly seven out of 10 people have been here for over 20 years, right? Uh, we do still have some new, relatively newcomers, five to 10 years. Um, we've got a good range. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about some of the parts of the plan. And then we'll ask harder questions, different questions. It's gonna ask you to sort of evaluate what you're seeing, all right? So the way this happened was uh, people said, you know, preserve and protect the natural lands. 
And the way they did that, these are pictures from those base maps. They drew a lot of green. We, a lot of green marker was spent on these maps. Um, they talked about the aquifer and the gas line. They said protect the environmental space. We learned about salt and the land trust. They talked about um, the Schreiker property and other properties. You know, on all, I would say, you know, eight out of eight tables had something to say about protecting natural lands. What I, I believe that our number one approach to protecting this area is actually to focus development best we can elsewhere in the historic centers of this community, not Northeast Ramapo, but other areas. And a lot of people said to us, why are you starting with Northeast Ramapo? Because it feels like this is the development charrette. When the reality is, and I'm sorry, this is hard to see, that's a dark center. And then what we're getting at is focus here in the in-town areas. You're on the edge of development in a lot of ways. And so do everything you can in order to, in order to not create like a disposable city that moves, that where the, the center dies and everything just keeps moving outward and outward and outward like we see too often in this country. Focus development on that center. And I want to tell you, as part of this larger comprehensive plan project, we are going to be going down to that area. I and mean, there's a variety of tools that we can use to satisfy the development that's going to be coming in the historic centers, okay? We're going to be talking to them, and hopefully you join us, because you're both in this together. You're the hinterlands of some of these areas. And the more development we can accommodate there, the more easy it is that we can relieve the development pressure in this area. We're going to be talking about focusing development in mixed-use areas, building along their transit-oriented development. There's train lines and train stops there. Let's focus development. If you've got a thousand development uh, houses coming in the next five years, I bet we could accommodate them in areas that have already been built, right? And scarified. We need to update the zoning codes to allow for that, and we need to concentrate public-private uh, efforts in order to build in those historic centers. Now out here, we have a different approach. Out here, we need to update the, regu the protection regulations. Over there, it's gonna be updating the development regulations and expediting development and saying this is where we wanna grow. Out here, we've gotta work on preservation, requiring environmentally friendly design. People were talking about light imprint and green infrastructure and solar orientation. Create zones with environmental overlays, more protection than currently exists. Increase environmental performance of open spaces. People were talking about planting uh, native species, getting rid of the invaders, invasives and the exotics, planting for the pollinators, the bees, and the bugs, which bring plants and flowers. Uh, and to think about new mechanisms for funding preservation, whether it comes from borrowing or it comes from fees, the idea is we need to work with the land trusts in order to purchase more land. People talked about needing new public facilities. Schools, library, trails, small parks came up. People said um, something to draw tourists, and they didn't mean a Taco Bell, they meant great natural experience, right? Ag space, community gardens, trails and picnics were drawn over in the orchids of Conklin, uh, over at the Mount Ivy, these little dotted lines was a whole possible trail system I was working with Jim on. And it's just, you know, we followed the rivers. We looked at the paths that people are already taking, and we went up to the summit with the path, that kind of thing. What Rob was doing is he took the Mount Ivy County Park, large parcel, it's protected, county owned. Right now there's limited connections and there's limited access. And those of you that go there and we got a chance to see it, know these hidden paths and they're great. Uh, but it's possible that, you know, we could do more to it. When you arrive there at the corner of Palisades Parkway and Route 202, especially when the sun is setting, it is a gorgeous experience. You're up high, the, the sun is on you, it's quiet, the stillness and the shadows of winter. And they, there are these pathways, these informal pathways that move down. Sometimes they get really soggy, um, but the locals know the path to take. What Rob has been looking at is, is, is at these paths. Paths like, for instance, you know, the old rail line that used to go through it, that's a spot to start because it's, it's graded, it's up, it's not very wet. So we need to, and I know the ownership patterns there are complex and people have been talking about that for a long time, but it needs a sustained effort. And then Rob started to imagine, you know, the trails that would follow the creeks, the trails that would go up to the summits and to formalize these spaces. 
if you want to get people to care about nature, build an environmental ethic. You got to get them into nature and experiencing it uh, and seeing what a beautiful area you have. Right now, the entry to that rail trail area looks like this. It's a crash gate and someone used it. <laughs> um, what if? What if we make that a focus, right? And we turn it into something welcoming, comfortable, safe, interesting, strollers and bikes. We go from who wants to hike there to something inviting and interesting. How do you keep the vehicles off of that? How do you keep the vehicles off of it, Rob? Well, there's gonna be, you still need gates and bollards and different things like, like those shack there. You could do it a little more elegantly than that, right? <laughs> bollards are nice, you know, because then the bikes, even horses, could pass through bollards. You're right, so this should be bollards to keep the cars off the side. No one's recommending cars in that area. Yeah, because there's a, a problem in the area yeah. with quads or with the ATVs. You're right. Wherever they, you know, kind of, if you go to the Capcan area, you'll see yeah. a lot of the illicit use of uh, that. Is this a no ATV area? Probably. Well, Capcan yeah. can hear it. Uh, all right. Complicated. All right. No. All right. We'll look into that. But you're right. Motorized vehicles, not so much. Not very far over is are the orchids of, of Conklin. Uh, Orchard. Orchards. Yep, what'd I say? Orchids. orchids. It's not orchids. They're beautiful. <laughs> We're not that tropical. <laughs> we haven't gotten a lot of sleep. We've been going to bed late. We've been getting up early. Orchards. Right now it's already kind of a destination. They got the little uh, like uh, deli and uh, market there, and it's really kind of cool. Um, and uh, it's a place that has a lot of history. Right now it's county owned, which oh. is very important. Yes, right? Um, so it will not see development. <laughs> but it's another place that you could turn into a kind of destination. Now you can go there for apple picking and it's excellent and you get the, the cider and the hay rides for a portion of the year. But you could extend the use of it and people's enjoyment of it. You could ima Rob was imagining a bed and breakfast and making it part of the, like, the school trips that go somewhere all the time. Community gardening. And then this other idea. The, I've come to learn from Ben, the state of New York has made vineyards and breweries and cideries easier to, to do, so that way farmers have a source of revenue besides the mercurial natural environment, there's good seasons and there's bad. Everybody uh, is interested in going to the vineyard. Here at this orchard, it makes more sense for a cidery. Right now it's a really interesting experience, but there are some spots where Rob imagined creating really great places. Yeah. Right the uh, Queens County Farm as an example. Queens County Farm, yeah? Yeah, in New York City. All right. They have a, a working farm in Queens. People actually hold weddings there. That's right. Yeah, this would be a great place for a wedding. The bride and the groom over here. Kind of the in-laws, everybody's over in this That's spot. Um, now look. What, what we're not proposing a big, is a big, huge, mega agricultural market factory situation. We're essentially, it's not a mall. It is a pavilion and some chairs, and somewhere there's a, there's a drum of copper and there's cider, and that's it. What Rob did is he, he, he went to the most minimal and small spot, because you want to keep the long views. You want to keep every single apple tree. You know, you don't want to destroy the experience, so anyway, yeah, a very, very light touch there. Still could create a great destination. On the topic of improving the traffic situation, or at least not making it worse, I would say five out of eight tables said don't increase traffic. They were drawing the intersections that get really bad. They were letting us know about scenic roads and the bad intersections. You know, um, a traffic, formal traffic study is going to be done as part of this project. However, here's my informal traffic study. People were saying, look, so this is uh, uh, Google Earth. This is the traffic layer on. Red equals bad, green equals good. This day everyone's saying, look, this is the, this is the Bronx and, and the Newark and the Queens area. This is what we left. And, this is, and we don't want that up here, right? You said 6.30 a.m. Is that Saturday and Sunday? This morning. 6.30 a.m. and today's Thursday. So here's what it looks like. We zoom in a little bit. At 6.30 a.m., 287 is already almost impassable going that way. 
Yeah, there starts to be a little bit of orange. 6.30 a.m. and 45 and 59 are becoming hard to travel. And 287 has, begot, has gotten really bad, right? By 7.30, we haven't even hit rush hour. By 7.30, forget 287, <laughs> especially if there's an accident. And this, the orange is starting to appear. That orange could be quite a bit of time waiting for what seems like no reason. We keep moving by 8.30. Here's your rush hour, right? I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but that red could cost, you know, it could take 20 minutes out of somebody's life. Red equals super bad when it comes to this map. Along 45, there is, there is quite a bit of traffic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 306, yeah. As you get down to Muncie, 306, it started to become... So what we've been talking about is how um, this is a lot more traffic than a community with so few people is used to seeing or makes any sense, really. Yep. Would you allow me to interject here? Sure. My house borders the Palisades Parkway. Yep. Many people go to Manhattan from Orange County, and I will tell you, yep. rush hour begins at 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, right. Wow. And yeah. goes until 9 o'clock. You can't get on that parkway, yeah. let alone a fender bender or a deer accident. Right. You're sitting there most times 45 minutes to an hour. That's right. This is actually a relatively good day. This yeah. morning there wasn't an accident. Was empty. But with oh. one accident, you're right. All of a sudden, the whole thing could turn red. Or rain. That's right. Or rain. Or anything no. else. Let me, let me tell you, a formal, tra a tra formal transportation study, not me waking up as early as I'm willing to wake up, 6.30, and looking at my phone, but a formal transportation study will identify what you're talking about. The commute that starts at 4.30. You don't have to get up in December and January. But that's also one of the things you have to consider is that is the only highway from this corner. That's right. Yeah, so this corner is very, it's like you're like a peninsula. You've got the woods uh, to the west of you, you've got the water to the east of you. You're kind of like an island with just a couple bridges out. Now, I want to show you something. This at 9.30, generally 9.30 things start to calm in other places. But your roads, especially 45 at 306 and all along these, they actually get worse. And that's because that's the time that a lot of the school buses are out, right? And you've got a lot of schools at all different kinds. A big part of this project is going to be to, we just started here. We just started to identify the intersections that are a problem and the spots that are choke points. I just all I can tell you at this point is that we, we understand what you're going through and our job is to make this easier on you. Yes, sir. So two two points. Iowa and three oh six is a failed intersection. Right. Cited by the New York State DOT. Yes. That's number one. Number two, December and January is not indicative the traffic on the Palisades, you have to do this, come through the summer. Right. And it's even worse. Friday, Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon of what month is your worst month, would you say? Starting from um, April yeah. all the way until Labor Day. After right. September. Just ask Google, right. it'll tell you. Ask Google, all right, that's right. We can get that to you. wake up at 6 in the morning and say, ah, no that's right. traffic Good. at 6 oh, in the I'm glad to hear it. On a Tuesday. To be usual morning all right. on Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Going into the fall because they're watching the leaves change. Oh, that's, all right, so uh, so understood. This is an understatement. Uh, this doesn't even present the full picture. Absolutely. What Sunday. we can even, what it's I, Sunday coming the other Sunday way. coming, all right. So what we can even see this morning was actually pretty bad. I want to tell you that, so this has to be about transportation. And uh, it also has to be about bikes. Ideally, we could get some of the people off the local roads who are interested in cycling if we could provide safe ways for them to cycle. You don't have enough uh, bike lanes and bike paths. Um, and a lot of the population is older and a lot of the population is very young. So what we're also looking into is the, the Cadillac of bike facilities, the bike boulevard. Sometimes it doesn't feel, sometimes you don't want to have your kids in this situation next to the cars. It's pretty good for the strong and fearless Lycra among us, like uh, like Ben. Um, but a lot of but others need something more like this. This only recently became <coughs> legal by the Department of Transportation, inexplicably. But it's a two-way bike facility, absolutely protected. It's basically like a bike path, like you used to have through the woods or on a rail trail. But it goes through cities, and I have to tell you, for whatever reason. New York Department of Transportation, the Department of Trans Transportation all over the country have fought this forever. But it's just become legal. We got to work in Victoria, British Columbia to put on bike facilities like this. 
Yes, I mean, this is gorgeous. Have you identified one single road in all of Ramapo where you even think you could find it? All right, I accept your challenge. I have one. I have one road at least part of this presentation. Right? Right. But you're right. Look, the the Cadillac of bike facilities can't be fit in many places. Yeah. Two o two, did you say? Well, funny you should mention. Yeah. Let me just let me just say as a as a, as a, as a a uh, regular cyclist, okay. including a bicycle for many years in Geneva, Switzerland, where they have some paths like this and some where the path is only uh, on the right-hand side yeah. of the road, and right. you feel far safer that way. Having the two-directional uh, traffic is not very practical for the uh, bicycle, the cyclist who then wants to go to a store that's on the far side. Oh yeah? yeah. Well, that's interesting. So well, um, yeah. a, if I have the preference, I would much rather see a, a one-way path yep. on each side of the street. Now, do, are, do you qualify as strong and fearless? Are you a Lycra? I grew up, do you I grew have up, a 2500-mile bike? I don't have Lycra, but I grew right. up in Manhattan riding a bicycle in city yeah. streets before there were bike paths. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, you're right. Different yeah. users for different things. That was actually why the Department of Transportation was, was not in favor of this for so long. They felt this was a facility that created head-on crashes, mm -hmm. and they were afraid of that. No. All right. Yeah. When you do your yep. bike paths, yep. you mentioned earlier the, uh, the abandoned rail path. Right. You need to start looking at the abandoned, the one that you're even looking here. Right. Unfortunately, they allow development on, on a good portion, yeah. but to go to the train station, yeah. um, starting from Saddle River Road, yeah. all the way up to Suffolk. That's right. So you can take a great, I mean, it should be developed to that. Yep. You can do that. All right. And then you can work that way down to manual. The larger regional trails, absolutely. Huh? Huh? I want to tell you, sometimes sometimes it's also this. These are the bike boulevards where only locals are able to go past these barriers. They drive right over them and they park on the street or they park. But what this is a very rare approach, but it's but it's nice. The, what's that? These are not the kind of streets we have. Not the kind, well, this is, this is very similar as you're right. Your streets generally are very, very narrow. And it, and it isn't necessary to stop the vehicular traffic. Also, we need to think about snow clearance. I was just going to say that's that. Right. That's, that's right. Yeah. Snow clearance in this situation. Do this on 202? Not 202. Yeah. Can't do this on 202. This is basically more the neighborhood streets. There are people, cyclists that we know who are going through the neighborhood streets. Uh, and I have to say, you know, especially among the, the Hasidic community, uh, I just think that every once in a while maybe there shouldn't be as many cars on the road. Uh, it could be more walking. It could be more biking. Can't do this on 202. It's not a 202 approach. I will tell you that we looked all over the place for just somewhere to park the bike. The bike, and <laughs> this is the only one we found <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Kelly can attest. And uh, look, if you're gonna be cycling, you're gonna need a lot more of that too. I wanna tell you that Rampo is applying for great. This isn't a new idea. Your, your people are already working on that. Another thing that we have to keep in mind is, look, we talk about widening some of the larger streets, right? Remember, uh, widening can, is good and bad. It's, you want it wide in places, and there are other places where you want to be careful because you might be creating a problem worse than the one that you had. And all I'm going to say is there's no one approach to streets, not one approach to bike facilities, and not one approach to streets. Remember, there's going to be streets that you're going to want to keep very, very slow. This is the dreaded crash diagram. I do it in black <laughs> because if a car hits you at 45 miles an hour, uh, your, your chance of fatality is 85%. If you slow the cars down to 20 miles an hour and the car hits you, it's the worst day of your life, but your chance of surviving is much better. Yeah, the helmet. And the helmet's necessary. But just remember, you don't want to make every every road as wide and as fast as possible. All right, you know that. Every once in a while, um, you you want uh, medians in the roads to provide spots where pedestrians can wait and they can be safe before crossing the large roads. Every once in a while, too, I'd even recommend the roundabout. A lot of mixed feelings about the roundabout in this community. But every, what the roundabout does is the cars are able to move very, very slowly. If the cars are moving 20 miles an hour and there's a, there's a, a person gets hit, then they're more likely to survive. They put one in in Wesley Hills. They put one in Wesley Hills. How many people? No. How many people like the one in Wesley Hills? Raise their hands. All right. All right, 10. But here's the problem. Wait, wait one second, one second. How many people don't like the one in Wesley Hills? Well, it's ugly as hell. All right, so we got 16 people. So what, what's the problem? The problem is that people in America are not used to roundabouts like right. they would be in England. So they don't know whether they should merge, wait, and that, and therein lies the problem. No, the it's the problem education of nobody, roundabouts nobody in this country. When they enter the circle, right. they try to cut off 
They cut off everybody. I got to get yeah. there. That's Wait enforcement. But, that, but that's it's an enforcement, and it's also a, an, and they did a lot people that are naive about, about roundabouts in this country. And they're ugly? They are. We, hey, we did this one in Coral Gables. Isn't it nice? The water and everything. Yours is the one is West Hills is ugly? Has some bricks. Just, just bricks? Yeah. All right, look, we're going to put that on the maybe list. <laughs> One thing that we do know is there are certain places we could put on street parking that slows down traffic. There's a lot of places where you're going to need crosswalks so that way people can cross. And this is a neighborhood intervention. This is called a speed table. There used to be the speed bumps, but the plows don't like the speed bumps. No one likes the speed bumps. These speed tables kind of lift just a bit, and you're able to cross safely. Cars slow down and they move. The airport has these already. New City has it. New City has them. Consider this, all right? Um, I want to tell you that your town's already on it. Rampo is planning to improve 10 to 20 intersections with pedestrian crossings. You need to talk to Michael to find out if they're the ones that you're concerned about, but they're already on it. There are places where the sidewalks end, and that's a scary situation. That would have to, if you could, we could create a connected network. Let me tell you the first places that you want to connect with the very expensive sidewalk infrastructure. You don't want sidewalks everywhere, but you want to. Think about connecting the schools, the public schools and the private schools. Uh, maybe every once in a while, not in the dead of winter, but maybe every once in a while there could be, this was an idea that came from the public, we researched it a bit, the town's applying for grants in order to do this. Maybe every once in a while, instead of all the 50 school buses, the kids could walk in parades of a kind and people could use bikes, right? No, we're shaking our heads. They already do that. Yeah? In fact, I saw that today I happened to be uh, walking to the synagogue at, uh, it was 415. Right. And the boys from Vishnitz Yeshiva yeah. were going en masse right. across the, uh, it's a four way uh, uh, stop yep. for the pedestrians at Route 306 right. and Maple Avenue. All right, so you had exactly that kind of yeah. crowd of boys. Yeah, with well, boys, boys and girls separately, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Separately. <laughs> Look, you can. I'm just going to suggest that perhaps you can even formalize a little bit because you're right. This is not a community that that doesn't know how to walk. All right, we're getting through these. Create local main streets and centers. People said no Walmart up over in that area. Um, uh, people talked about using planned urban development with controls. Uh, where the impact to local streets is negligible. This is the 202 corridor. They're saying, make this a commercial corridor. I don't know what that says. Open spaces, open spaces, shops. Uh, so fine, if this is a commercial corridor, remember it's a scenic corridor. So that's what we were told about that. You remember we were talking about how main streets are nice. You park once and you walk around and you buy. And this is not so nice. You know, it's all right. I mean, it gets you there. But there's, there are buildings here that are, have outdated their design life. They're going to be replaced in the future. We asked you, we showed you some pictures, and we said, what did you think about streets that look like this? Uh, those that you were here on Tuesday, and everybody said, 85% said they hated it. What about streets like this? A lot more people liked it, though we picked the wrong uh, holiday decoration, <laughs> admittedly, uh, and a lot of people felt that it was a bit too dense. But what I'm getting at is a little more like this and a little less like that. Here's the, here's the site that we've been looking at. You remember people were talking about 202. You know that growth is coming. Again, my recommendation is figure out where you want it and figure out where you don't want it. Let it happen where you want it and you can satisfy the market need and you have less pressure on the places where you don't. Here is the Ramapo Plaza. It's seen better days. Um, uh, this area has, if you look back through the, the books, there, sometimes there have been buildings on it. Buildings have come and gone on this property. This one is nice and pristine, and this is the one where Walmart was planning, but people were saying, don't, don't worry about that one. There's plenty of developable area there. The old quarry. What if? All right. Well, look, remember, we're going to give you the... sell my house now before it's impossible to sell it. All right, so, so you, you prefer this, right? It's clearly, you're, you're keen on that. No, but that's too much. All right, is this too much? This is out of scale. That's a city. You have a way to show it the little less? A little less? A little less? Yes, we do. A lot less? All right. Remember, uh, 
Our team all, our team pretty much all went to architecture school. All right, wait, wait, calm down, calm down. Our team went, noted, our team went to architecture school. You know what happens in architecture school? You draw and your professor comes and basically rips it off the wall and makes you cry. And then you redraw it and you keep doing that. This is helpful. You're ripping it off the wall. All right. Burn it. No. Of course, Simon. Simon, I think you did a great job. But look, in order for this to work, I'd yes. I'd like it to look more like the orchards now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, there's a property owner, there's a developer who, who, would, who has rights and constitutionally, he's probably not going to turn it into an orchard. So what we need to do is find the right level of development that makes sense for this community. Right. Now, whatever level we choose, and I miss, this is really just a two-story environment, but whatever level we choose, a couple things he did different. Here he has a public space, a small square, places that people can meet. Here he's got, um, he's got awnings and small shops. People were saying no to the big boxes and yes to the small uh, restaurants and shops. How long is it going to take me to get home now? Right. I got to get through that to get past out where the, the stables are. Even if you turned everything into four lane highway around here, you still don't have traffic, sustainable travel. It's just, it's too congested as it is. Here's the thing right now, let me, talk, let me answer your questions. Just, right now, all the customers that come here have to drive. They're all on 202. Right. And the only thing that area can support is a big box. If you don't like walkable mixed use urbanism, that's all right. The development community would be very happy to put an enormous box here and an enormous box here. What I'm recommending is you get ahead of that. Now I, you know, it is I, good. It's just too much. It's too much, yeah. You where, know, where where would someone like me be right. able to park in there when you don't even have enough parking for the people who live there? All right, good question. You're right. And where's your bicycle? Where's your economic? Uh, your economic? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you've got cars. I mean, when those shops, like, as ugly as it is, when those right. shops are actually like people are going and buying their vape, yeah. that parking lot gets full. Okay. Yeah. Where there's all the water. You know? Uh, water. Yeah. All right, let's. And you've got two two cars per unit, at maybe. least, maybe three, and right. the kids get to be driving it, right? or yep. even four. Right. Bicycles, or whatever else might go in there, but where are you going to ride? All right. Have the developer for yeah, subterranean parking? Mm -hmm. Probably not. So so it's also, it's a a relatively wet site, so we couldn't go underground there. Oh, you got a pool underground. All right, now guys, guys, you just give me a second here, all right? So we can move on with this presentation. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not surprised this was your reaction. I told Simon. I said, Simon, don't do this. I'm going to be the one up here. And again, when we come back in December, it's only three weeks away, we'll give it another shot. But I want to tell you again the things that I like about this. Welcome. I'm glad he came now and not a couple say, days ago. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. Oh, it's great. It's, it's all good. I'm sure. Let me tell you a couple of the things that, that let me, we're going back to the drawing board on this, but let me tell you a couple of things that I like. 202 has a, a, a two-way bike facility. 202 is one of maybe even the only opportunity where we could actually put on that major bike facility. And there are a lot of people that, there are a lot of cyclists that take that street already. How far would it go? Well, it seems like if we went if we went all the way through uh, Pomona, the whole length of 202, that would be an experience that a, a cyclist might actually take. All the way to Suffern? Possibly. Ideally. Yeah. <coughs> right, because then you have the train. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. But, but we haven't looked at the right of way. This, this, is not, this doesn't require road widening in this area. You've got some very big shoulders. The other thing that uh, Simon did is he added a lot of green. The question of where is the water going to go, he, he basically, instead of asphalt, right, he's basically adding medians without curves. He's adding, um, we call them French drains. It's basically these places where water can, can accumulate. Um, in terms of, let's see. That's nice. <laughs> right. Go back to the one with the monument in the middle. Oh, the money. Yes. The monument Look, the I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to let you know. I'm not sure it's going to. We, we're talking to the owner of this. I'm not sure it's going to stay like that forever. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, the one with the monument. 
You like that space. You're not selling it. You're not selling Well, I'll tell you, there are some, there are, there are seven very, very vocal people here, and then there are other people who are not. And here's what we get to do. We're going to get to show you with the keypad polling and ask you how you feel about those. Where are you parking all the cars? We the one too, Where's our car? All right. Where's all the cars? What Simon has done is there's parking here. There's parking along all the streets. Instead of a lot of parking lots, what Simon did is he parked the cars linearly. Uh, streets can become like long, linear parking spaces if you use on-street parking. He's got a parking lot here. He's got a parking lot here. He's got a parking lot here. How wide are those streets? Yeah. I don't know. It's just a SketchUp model. But I would bet, I would bet that's a 10-foot lane and a 10-foot lane and a 10-foot sidewalk and a 10-foot sidewalk. What are you doing? That's, that's no, 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 no. Forget about the snows. How cool. am I going to get my fire trucks in there? That's not I need, cool. I need at least 32 feet. And if it's a two-story, I need my aerial ladders to go up. Ain't going to happen. Allowing, so on our steering committee that we're working with, we actually have two people, one representing the fire department, another representing emergency responders. Right. This is just a SketchUp model. It's a first preliminary concept of a walkable mixed-use place instead of a drive-only suburban one. Something new instead of something dying. But before it ever became something that got built, yes, it goes through the fire department. It goes through the emergency responders. And if you need the 32 feet, no one would argue with uh, with the fire marshal and with the need to going forward. What we have done here is we have this gas pipeline through there too. What we have done is we create a mix of units and a walkable urban environment. There's places to retire, there's places for young people to move into. But what for the tar and feathers? But administrator, that's right. Tar and feathers. I tell you what, save save the tar and feathers for December. When I come back in December, if I show it to you and it doesn't look any different or it looks worse, then uh, then the tar and feathers. Okay. One one of the things that um, would be interesting to know is will there be any mixed use units? You know, that's that's right. what he was the whole thing would be mixed use units. So there's shops at the bottom. That's yeah. right. So what that means is. There are shops at the bottom, and there's living up above. And how or do the shops get there could be offices. Sense. What's up? And how do the shops get deliveries? Deliveries. Deliveries happen along this road. The secondary road in a mixed-use environment like this is usually large enough for the delivery trucks. Now, it doesn't mean deliveries can come all day. What usually happens in places like this is the deliveries have a two set hours at the morning and two set hours at night when they come in and come out and the rest of the time. Hey, how about this? If we tone this down a bit, does anyone like this idea? No. It's a good no. concept. No. All right, raise your hand if you like this idea, if it was toned down a bit. A lot. Toned down a lot. Toned down a lot. All right. All right. The thing is, if you're, it's, it's great. The idea of putting a, um, you know, a walkable community is great, but what you're doing is exactly that. You're putting an entire community into a place where there were a few small strip malls. Mm -hmm. And all of the people in the surrounding area need to use whatever stores are there. And we would have to drive to those. Um, and this is this is basically like taking a little, a, a, a very lovely piece of Brooklyn and smacking it down into the woods. And that's a problem. Well, no, it wouldn't be a gated community. It couldn't be a gated community. These, what, what is now parking lots would become public right-of-ways. Again, it's not exactly Brooklyn. It is two stories, and at its highest, three stories. But again, noted, we're going we're gonna to tone it down. And you're not showing could, the other side of the street, either. That's the thing. Which is going to be exactly the same thing. So, so you're talking about this plus another two times that amount. And you're not the other side of the street, actually, but what, our, what we hope is actually that this could actually be preserved. That there could be a way to stop that from becoming something bigger. What's that? Interesting point. Um, Pat, you tell me. What would you like to say? Only one. All right. If if it had to go anywhere better here than somewhere else. Hey, let me tell you this. This is not even the most shocking thing tonight. <laughs> well, let's go. And where are the garages in this? They're not. It would, it would, ideally, you wouldn't create structured parking. It's very expensive to do that. Yeah, but people want garages in this area. Oh, like you mean backyard garages, single-family house garages? Well, a garage, even a garage. In, in, a, in a condo in a 50,000. It's, it's right. just not the, it's not the character of our community. 
And as the crow flies, you have the Minisiango golf course, which is how many units? Wait till you see that sign. <laughs> All right, the other aspect of this, look, in order to create mixed use walkable places instead of drive only suburban spots, you're gonna want all the, the, the uh, amenities of that. The, the lamp posts, the nice flowers, the signs, um, the, uh, uh, the, the re trash receptacles, the places to sit. You can go to Connecticut to see that. Are <laughs> <laughs> okay. there taxes or not? comes the shocker. That's right. We save the shocker for the middle. Oh, not last? Well, let me tell you about, this is the shocker part, all right? And again, we don't want to be here till 11 o'clock. So just one gasp and uh, make the tar and feathering quick. Now look, the, the bottom line with this stadium, as you all know, is a beautiful uh, uh, wilderness was essentially cut down in order to build it. And it was a shady deal that got it built. Uh, I say that respectfully and not being from here, I'm repeating back what I heard from, from other people. Um, and you know that you can hear the wind smacking against this thing because there used to be trees blocking the wind, and now not so much. And we don't think this is gonna go back to wilderness. Um, so we're gonna try to build our way out of the problem. Okay. Right now, it's a, it's a stadium that um, doesn't see enough uh, to justify what was lost, and it's not paying for itself. What people were talking to us about doing was actually just trying to add some other uses. If all this asphalt's already here, then why not add perhaps a place to get a beer or get a sandwich, um, perhaps add a, a square, perhaps try to create a, a place that people would come to 365 days a year instead of just the, the 30 or so that there are games. Uh, James retained a lot of parking. There is so much parking. Um, you ever see how full the parking lot actually is on the 4th of July here though? Um, game day, absolutely. And the 4th of July with the fireworks, which everybody here is very excited about, I know. I don't want to be here now. I don't like being in this building. Right. Well, as we said, we talked about moving the next set of meetings to another building. Noted. Look, you could stop there. All right, you could stop there and there would be a reason to come. The reality is it's a, it's a beautiful facade on this building to a degree, as best as they could do. Um, and if there was a square and some buildings and some destinations, it could help the, the economic bottom line. Uh, it's possible that, James, that we're not showing enough parking. <coughs> well, this is the kind of place that could actually have a two-story structured parking environment. And that means there would be plenty of parking without having to build any surface parking. There's a telecommunication center right now, which is gated, and the technology is shifting. So James said, well, if we're gonna build town in this area, let's go over to this spot. And then there's the big vacant uh, parking lot over to the right. <coughs> and so he continued, what do we have? A walkable network of streets. Nothing green is being torn down in order to do it. We're essentially <laughs> creating- We <laughs> lose all the parking. So what are you putting so if you're putting it there, you have a stadium, and you're doing this, okay? Which, oh is, which is what you want to do. So basically, what you're doing right now is destroying the stadium. No. You know why? Because stadiums and ballparks are all over the country. I've been involved in the planning and the construction of many a stadium and ballpark. My favorite one is Chihuahua Stadium in El Paso, Texas. And you'll notice there that they have built a whole community around it. This isn't fantasy land stuff. You could actually do that. And often communities Where's have to park? in order to do. do it. Park? They're doing it in Sacramento with King. The parking is happening. You know, there was a lot of enthusiasm when it came to building ballparks. And the reality is economically, they haven't quite panned out. And so the communities are trying to think of ways in order to salvage mm -hmm. these things. And at the same time, where's the parking? James is showing two two-story structured parking, three two-story structured whoa, whoa, whoa. parking. You got our fire training center. Yep, it's there. gone. That's right. <laughs> Where did you move us? That's right. And the uh, Where did you move? No, no. That's not That's not a simple answer. I'm right. What are you doing with our fire training center? It's not in this. It's not in this. Fire tra training center stays. It's up there. Okay. I bet so, you. So you understand we have a helicopter coming in. We have other trucks coming out. We have a whole street to train our firefighters. Practice with burns. Practice burns, smoke, which and everything else. What is how's that gonna impact everybody else here? Depends on how the moves. <laughs> I mean I mean you, you have us fighting. We're the idiots that are going in as everybody else comes out. 
we're still a volunteer organization, and basically you just pushed us aside by putting this, and you're gonna make it harder to have a, the state-of-the-art training set. Billions of dollars added to your um, tax base. Your schools would be better, your parks would be maintained, your roads What's could be improved. In East Ramapo? And your, 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 your fire stations could be whatever you need, sir, and your police stations could be palaces. What I'm getting at is, in order, in order to pay for the things that people were asking for, you're gonna have to come up with sources of revenue. Otherwise, all the conservation we're talking about is fantasy. That's correct. How many and residents are you talking about, I think, sir? Just James, it's a, it's a concept, sir. I, I don't know. The, what's your rough estimate of how many uh, residents there would be with these new residential structures? Tell you what, that's a great question. Uh, yeah. The number of residents, also the effect on the roadways, how many truck cars does it add? Mm -hmm. uh, plus, I would like to figure out how it would help the tax base, even at its smallest <laughs> level. Now, look, I'll tell you, James Doherty is an urbanism zealot. He lives in Budapest, one of the nicest one of the nicest cities in the world. I told him to stop. I said, James, don't keep going with this. Um, but he did. But you know, the, student, the sewer system for that alone isn't enough, and it just went in for most of this area to sustain all the waste coming out of that. Let alone all the other projects that have been proposed. Another good question. How does how does this uh, what impact does it have on the the sewer system? What impact does it have on the water system? I'm curious. Well, I, we're going to do the keypad polling pretty soon on this, and you can tell me. <coughs> you know, I, I think the word for Ramapo today really should have been greed, and the word for the future should be greed. Because that's what we're seeing. We're just seeing greed. Uh, you're not seeing greed. They're, they're, what they're really doing is trying to build, is trying to make something to come out and trying to make the best of it is. I mean, like you said, this is a dream fantasy island here. Um, um, and whatever impact he's trying to do is just too much. You're putting 10 pounds in a two pound, yeah. a, in a two pound package, and yes, he's, they're doing great stuff, but you gotta remember, if they're bringing this many people and we're having a hard time in volunteer firefighters, sure. just alone, just alone, you know, what is that going to do to offset? So what they'll tell you is, and what is correct, you're going to have the rateables, and you think we're going to have, and you think you're going to have palaces. It's a young man's game, and if we can't retain this, and if this happens to have true affordable housing, to have people here, and the towns not stop, and the county stop doing the patronage jobs and give it to the young people, and they can work so they can fight and put out the fire. Otherwise, if you're looking at anywhere to another 200 to another 300 million to your tax base, and then who's gonna turn the lights out when you leave? Jason? What we were trying to do is we were trying to find actually, wait, no, number one, we, uh, fire departments, especially in communities like this, people live in old wooden structures. The fire departments are incredibly sensitive. And we don't we want to, don't want to do anything that affects the fire. I mean, I'm just we have we haven't had uh, anything to show you yet, and and we appreciate the job that you play in the community is essential. I like the idea of us talking and, and trying to figure something out. You know, I think I think there's a certain level here. I think we just went too far. Right, right. I agree. I, I mean, think there's there's a certain level that people are probably acceptable uh, with, and and I tell you the way this works is we don't know where to stop until um, until we've had the discussion. This is. Listen, there's people here that'll that really oh my God. that I'll, I'll get to that picture. All right, ready? All right, good. I was hoping that would. Jason, one second. Um, um, this is a difficult sell in general. And I'm not know, trying to sell anything. Let me, let me hear me out. Right. I'm gonna help you. Not, <laughs> not okay. Happy. All right. I think there maybe there's a different way to approach this because what you've heard from the very beginning, since Tuesday night, is all the wonderful things that you were saying, and Nicole was saying about sustainability and preservation. And we'll do this wonderful charrette exercise. Maybe there's a way to sort of balance this out kind of literally as you talk about we're adding this and explain to people what's going to be preserved as part of this plan. Because people, I'm sure, are certainly willing to give up certain parts of their quality of their life, their tax base, if they understand fully what it is 
they get in return. That's a good point. And so I'd like to see one of the things there, but we, this might be a little much for the ballpark area, but if we went this far, based on the rateables and what we could do, we could preserve the entire striker property. Right. Or whatever, like, I could think there needs to be a better form to explain to people who are essentially lay people right. what these things that you're adding on mean in terms of what won't happen, not necessarily how this is going to be destructive kind of Right. Well, I tell you, just just you know, absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, right. Well, I tell you what, Th that's the end of the movie. The end of the movie uh, might involve me running out that door, but before that, there's actually a slide which shows, like you're talking about, we show a lot of green on the map. We show the striker property as green. We show the orchard as green. Right. If the process by which you leading us through right. we're slightly older in a way in which it becomes digestible and understandable in real time, not like right. here's a happy ending. Well, I, I mean, we, I did show you a lot of preservation at the beginning of the presentation, <coughs> but yes, absolutely, good point. We're gonna, uh, eventually we'll get to the, you're gonna build here so you can preserve that, and that's not coming across. But, okay. What's the community well, trade-off? What's the trade-off, absolutely. Wait, what, let's just do a couple more here. People talked about affordable housing in neighborhoods for everybody. They talked about the church property. There were parishioners in here who were, talked about uh, church needs an endowment. It needs, it, needs an, it needs some way of paying for itself in the future. People talked about um, decentralized grocery stores instead of big, huge regional ones, smaller ones that are for locals. They talked about um, community resources, schools, smaller shopping, small child care, health care. People <coughs> talked about one uh, acre zoning solar power, electric car, hiking, dog parks. We know that um, whenever you build these oh, big no. things that, no, I'm, this is the, I'm subtly against this. <laughs> these things are, are causing a lot of stress in the community. Big, huge no. pods of three or four story or five story structures. Don't want you to know, destroy the community. And a lot of times people find themselves in houses like this, and, and that this house used to look like this, Right. Or smaller, and now it looks like that. And that's uh, uh, not as then. That, and that's, that's happening. And that's, that's not even as. I mean, what, you yeah. can see what they're actually doing now. And look, people are getting a little creeped out. They're getting notices in the mail. People are saying, "Can you sell your house right. to us?" And it's right. just, just ugh, makes you feel weird. And um, uh, and we understand that that's a big issue in this community. Um, now, uh, I, mean, I want to talk it to, to you about something that you don't have yet. There are tools in or in order to prevent big, huge, monstrous apartment buildings next to single-family houses. That tool is called form-based coding. It's a real thing. We've worked on communities across the country where you use form-based codes in order to build places that have a mix. There are small little main streets like that with the small grocery store and the dry cleaner and the child care. And, uh, and then there's affordable housing, inexpensive. It's not a huge pod with 500 units, it's a street. Uh, and then there are single family houses and uh, by virtue of building densely in one place, they're able to preserve land in another. Those of you that were at the meetings this week, remember me showing these communities that are, that are everywhere in the country, right? Outside of St. Louis, this formula is always the same. Main Street, uh, you can live above the unit that you, uh, that you um, work on. Um, attached houses, single family houses in Newtown City, uh, Charles, they have a community-supported agriculture to bring the community together. Baldwin Park's a little intense for this crowd, I know. I bet you're not excited about to see that structure, but what I like about Baldwin Park is they have the chains like, uh, like CVS and Five Guys Burger Fries and things like that, but they're in a Main Street environment. That's a CVS. It's part of a Main Street instead of being a box surrounded by parking. I like that they have real open spaces. Instead of remnants of the subdivision process, these crummy little wetlands that you're told are open spaces when the, when the developers develop these lots. I like the idea they started with the open space in Baldwin Park. The best land became the open space. That the waters, these are all new construction. This is all the last 10 years. None of this is historic communities, you know. This is called cottage courts. These are inexpensive houses, two or three bedrooms. Instead of a yard, they share what's called a court. All around the country, this is happening. The architectural style is different, really different in Tucson. I'm not saying this is, let's build this here. All I'm saying is it's the same formula in order to build these communities. With a five minute walk, the wealthy are living next to people who, have, uh, who are renting. 
I'm, I, I'm very proud of and really like uh, Hempstead and Montgomery. It's sort of similar here. It's got a rural feel. They've got a plaza where they have the farmer's markets. These houses are still, you check Zillow, they're only about $80,000. They still have single family houses and, uh, and there are um, But this is great. Open spaces. You're using different areas of what could be. And I have to assume you understand the demographics here. You understand there is a community that is growing exponentially and they're not going to be going to one and two, three bedroom homes. They're not going to start homes. So all you're doing, and again, and it's a great, you know, you're preserving, and I hear you're gonna preserve <coughs> here. The one thing that is lacking, in my opinion, and you can't control this. It's and and and, and I'm glad Michael is here. Michael Speck, the town, the, the supervisor of the town. He knows he has a tough job, and his he's tough just, job is. He's glad he's not up here at the moment. So I'm, glad he's here. Here. I'm glad he is here. Yeah. And then you also have Dr. Wertheim, who's also in part of Ramapo. When you right. mentioned we're going to get into the school, I want you to understand. And I'm going to put that elephant right here on the table. Okay. Our public school population is decreasing. Our in-growth, like your villages in that picture is there, that's your typical family that needs this. Right. There is no enforcement. If you don't have enforcement, you can build me the biggest palaces. All right? They're not going, as, as of today, they're not enforcing. The building code department is lacking. They don't have the, the, the oomph to do it. Because what they'll say is, okay, we find a violation, we're not doing it, you're built. Uh, there are people here that have been fighting it and then they get approvals. And then, oh, I did my job because I gave it to the court. It's up to the court, right? It's the passing of the buck. And so yeah. let me say for the record, yeah. Michael is trying to change that. Okay. His respect and that. I don't know how why Dr. Wertheim is still doing what she can do and with what she's got because it's a state formula and this, that. We're, that project, Avon Gardens, that used to be Avon Gardens, that supplied that school. When the kids can't have their band and the kids can't have all of this and then the people, they're, they're, and, and because I'm not sending my kids to the public school, you can build all this, you can be rateables, she needs to have stuff to do with these kids. Right. And she doesn't have it. And you can cry from here until tomorrow, the community isn't supporting our system. They're destroying that system. All right, now, look, um, the first thing I just want to say is, you know, we have been studying the demographics, and, and we are familiar with uh, the uniqueness of this population. Um, okay. uh, some, of the, some of the problems that you point out, I can't solve with a comprehensive plan with land development regulations in the zone. Right. It, I don't have, no one, yeah. Um, okay, as long as you understand that, yeah. I will give you that. I mean, I like what I see. Right. But if there is no code enforcement, and like right. you said, you got to give them back, yep. this is a exercise in futility. Mm -hmm. There's no infrastructure for any of this. <laughs> this is a great idea, this is a great concept. Right. That, that alone, <laughs> yep. okay? that you're, you even want to build and you put it together, that may accomplish for the next five years. Noted, all right, well, let me, let me, let me I, I absolutely agree. I just want to say that um, the subdivisions that are gonna happen here are gonna look like the ones in the past. Uh, and, and they're not uh, exciting, interesting places to live. And all I'm saying is you could have, instead of subdivisions, you could have new communities where people know each other, there's a barn, there's a place. Now I know there's a segment of the population for whom this does not work. They well, don't work for that, it's exactly what they'll get, but with the larger apartments, that's fine. But they're gonna outgrow it because- All right, now look, we're, we're, let's, let's- There is a section in yep. Muncie like that right now, Horizon <coughs> Courts, it's done nicely, but the Horizon problem Courts. is yep. you have outside of that you have people that have been built on single family lots. You yes. know, like what he's talking about is the enforcement is, yes, the, there is a code in town, 
but it's been trampled on. Okay, I understand. It's been ignored. Yeah. The develop their developers have lied. Right. And then they get forgiven. Now, look, most uh, most public meetings are about coming out uh, and being angry, um, and I understand that. This one is attempting to try to find solutions. These ideas, uh, you know, if, if you were in some of the meetings, people were talking about this stuff. Um, I'm not, I don't work for a developer, and uh, what I'm trying to do is trying to come up with a sustainable community, both green and economic. Um, You're doing a fine job, and it's great. <laughs> no, seriously, it's that. a great vision. These are the and, and, and like when I see don't Summerlin. But if there is no enforcement, is what I'm saying. Right. If you don't have enforcement, the cops are not going to do their job in certain sectors. Yep. Then you can build the most beautiful item, and this will be good. And it's like anything else. You get a brand new car, and then you feel bad with the first thing. And all of a sudden, you get sideswiped. Yeah. And you like it that way and drive it around like that, that's fine. But if there's no enforcement, then all the work that you have filled, and let's assume there's the trade off, just like the other jobs. All right, listen, un understood. Yeah. Enforcement. Okay. Co enforcement is an issue here. Yes. Co enforcement finds themselves perplexed by some of these uh, communities that are unlike anywhere else. We're, we're not sure about what to do constitutionally. There are communities that don't want to play ball. A lot of them escaped very, very scary places in the world and the worst times in history. I don't blame them for not wanting to open up their door to code enforcement. Um, uh, I can't solve those problems. All I can tell you is right now, this is what planners are able to tell you. The subdivisions that are getting built here are um, obsolete. The houses are not uh, for the coming generation. Correct. Um, the tax, your tax flows are going higher. Um, uh, the way these subdivisions are built now, it's like they design everything out where all the houses are going to go. And again, they have open space requirements that they satisfy. And they give you this little creek or wetland, and they say, congratulations, that's your park. Your kids do not have parks within walking distance to them. You've got vast, beautiful open spaces like the whole country Andes, but your kids don't have the little parks to go and play at that. And all I'm saying is that that's possible, and it isn't impossible. It isn't a pipe dream. We are running out of time, and so I'm going to skip a whole bunch in order to um, in order to get your votes. Yes, we need to get to the voting. It's the fun part of the night. But I have to show you this. You know the golf course site is owned by a developer who's interested in building it. If you can find the money to buy that out from under him, he would be happy to sell. The price is quite high. I'm development is probably going to come. I don't know. Okay. Our okay. recommendation to that developer is when development comes, instead of one road in and one road out creating traffic on your main roads, to create connections. Like this ballpark, the stadium that we're in, for instance. The economic activity happening here should be connected to this stadium in the hopes that everybody doesn't have to get on Panoma Road in order to come here when it comes time for the 4th of July. You're going to need more connectivity in order to create alternate routes. That, uh, that's, and so uh, we were able to talk to the developer and look at his plan. My takeaway from it is that um, there's room for improvement, uh, okay. respectfully, and that there should be more connections, and that there should be a more of a mix of units. If you're not interested in the 202, creating a community there, and if you're not interested in creating a, a community, uh, in the parking lot area that we're talking about, so let's see what you Con do here. consider consider that um, you know that development is coming along. Have the conversation with the developer. Maybe that's the place where you create the mixed use walkable place is he going that you're to have talking the about. Grocery or pharmacy, little things. Let's like go to the keypad polling. Is he going to have it? Not unless you, not unless you ask him. Not well, unless you. The stadium is close enough to that. So but let me ask you, but someone like yourself, I, I would love to have this conversation with you, but I want to respect these people's time. Let, okay. let me just put up a couple images and you tell me if you like it or if you don't like it. Okay. This is the one, this was our soft start. Um, but look, I, I respond however you would like. Rob is has a very thick skin and his feelings will not be hurt. What about the idea of a cidery or something at the orchard in order to 
get some more people there and get some economic activity in order to pay for it. Something Sounds small. Sounds good. I like it. Okay. I was worried. Yeah. All right. No, honestly, I do respect your opinion. I'm not. I am. I'm not from here. Look, this is this, this is your plan. You guys get to adopt it, or you get to not adopt it. But anyway, on the topic of the cidery, we ready? Yeah. All right. See. Who doesn't like it? Who doesn't like it? Oh well, I'm not. We're not going to call them out. But um, I look. You maybe you're the neighbor. Maybe you're the neighbor that wants to look at the apples, and I I understand that. But. But still 72, be there, right? what's that? They'll still be there's there. Huge lots out there. Yeah, that's right. The apples will still be there. The apples have to be there. Uh, but 72% of people said yes or, or probably yes. 24% need more information, which makes sense. Well, we're going to take all this back to our studio. We're going to come back with you for more information. Hey, Rob showed this idea, um, the idea of uh, a little more accessibility at the, was it Ivy Park? Mount Ivy, Mount Ivy, Mount Ivy Park. Park. Yeah. A little more accessibility. Questions remain. We have to make sure that cars aren't able to go out that road because that wouldn't make any gates. sense. Yes, yeah, an elegant gate. There needs to be an elegant gate uh, instead yeah. of what's currently there. No, uh, oh, some yes. people say no all-terrain vehicles. What do you think about that one? <clears throat> Fine. All right, good. Vote, vote, yeah, vote, with your, uh, vote with your clickers. I love working in New York. You know, you know, you, you know, you know where you stand. Right. There are places where you work. Everybody's well, silent the whole presentation. You're like, did they even hear me? But not in New York. <laughs> not in Ramapo. All right, 83% of people like that. All right, now it's going to get harder. You remember? Now, take a look at this. Now, this is stopping. Sh this is basically, here's the stadium, right? So we're over here. What he's do doing is he's putting in, just to be clear what this is, instead of the parking lot right here, actually, we're real parked. James says no to that. He says he wants to put in a green. He wants to put the parking off to the side. Uh, he's enclosing a space. He's putting in a uh, mix of uses, destinations. So, so could that be groceries for the for the, for the golf course? It could be. Yeah, I mean, the, the, in order to have a complete community, it's a good question. You need a, first thing you need is a pharmacy. Second thing you need is a small grocery store. Then first you can start to have residents. Uh, then you then you can start to have possibly a little shop okay. or a little. Uh, so this can provide it for the for the. So this can provide it for the golf course development. Let's say that. Yes. Remember how I showed the connections to the golf course development? Let's say, let's predicate, let's say th that yes, this would connect yes. and possibly provide, and actually, thank you for that. That's just gonna, this, hopefully this would work to create a center for that golf course community. Is that a parking garage? Is that a parking garage? Well, it's the one in the middle. Yes, yeah. this is a two-story yeah. parking garage. It's, it's in the middle of the block. Perfect. James did it so that way you can't see it. From outside, you drive by, you're looking at buildings, you're looking at beautiful green, uh, you're looking at buildings, Am parking, etc. Jason? No, you don't have to take it. Can you yes, explain sir. just how yeah. did it become like obvious that there have to be townhouses, uh, multiple story, right. multiple family units when there's nothing like that in this corner of uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what we're attempting to do is we're attempting to solve the affordable housing problem by creating uh, inexpensive units uh, with it, that are attached. That's why we added housing. Now, to be honest, you could do it either way. You could do it where it's just a place to get a beer, um, a place to celebrate a birthday. You wouldn't have to add living. But what we, what our firm tries to do with every project is complete, create complete no, I, places. I'm, I'm Would you like a better seat? Yeah, okay, I, okay my, my question is why are you having multiple uh, uh, family multiple story structures as opposed to, for example, townhouse type of uh, structures. That's a good point. As yeah. far as I can see on that, I mean, it's difficult to make out on that. Diagram. No, you're right. I don't see any, I see apartment buildings and not yeah. townhomes. Why, why, why could you not do that with townhouses? That's a, that's a good critique. Townhomes are nice because uh, it's ownership, people yes. own it, uh, instead of all rental. So right. once we drive. But hey, all right, okay. look, only 10 people have responded to this. Uh, vote again if you haven't voted. I'm just curious, do you like this idea? <clears throat> Obviously, yes, Steve makes a good point. It could be improved upon by having townhomes and ownership. James is listening. James did put townhouses in. There was a build out in the north, but, uh, the northern side. He did. We're going to get to that one. That's a good point, Ben. That'll be the other answers, but that's what he did plan. He planned for a mixed variety of housing units. He did. Uh, uh, more apartments nearer and yeah. closer to the park, even than townhouses and the like. Absolutely. I will, I will take the time to explain that. Okay. Are you ready? All right. 45% of people said yes or probably yes. Wow. 
And nearly the equivalent amount said can't tell yet. Right. And there are people who said no. But that's, that's interesting, right? We need to come back with more information about how this works. Yeah. Um, and how it connects to the dollar. And how it connects to the golf course, absolutely. No. All right, now, what if we go further? No. Now, like Ben said, the further out you go, let me open up the poll so you can vote. Remember, if you push uh, no four times, it will only register once. But it feels good. That's right. Hey, so what James did in this case, to, and I appreciate that you're able to read this. Here, he put townhomes, right? So what he did is, here's a center, so this is basically uh, three stories of probably apartments. Then he put the mixed use. Now, what he's doing is he's transitioning from a dense area to a less dense area. There's the townhomes. So presumably there'd be renters here, younger and older, and there would be owners here, and the whole variety. He's got single family houses and, and, uh, and duplexes, he's got townhomes, he's got apartment buildings. Um, so what do you re so really you're, you're you're kicking out that stadium? Here he's got single family houses. All right, that's a good question. When we come back, we've got to prove we got to talk to the operators of the stadium. We've got to find out more about how the performa how the stadium works, and we've got to prove to you that we're not kicking out the stadium. What, what is on the top left? Those long buildings. What are they? Top left, left. left. The, other the other side. side. Yeah, there, but the shadow is. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, what, right what now, are those? This rendering is nothing. Right, right now, we're just asking about the stadium. Okay. But, yeah. All right, anyway, so we, we have wait, 30 responses. We just still need a couple more responses. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir? Just, uh, what's the story, though, if you went with the previous version, what would keep them from winding up with this? Because ah. uh, once you've got all that other space and you see the economic right. returns on it, and finally, the uh, stadium is a money loser that's going to be torn down and you, what you've wound up with is a small city on um, the side of Pomona Road. Correct. Good point. How do we, exactly. how do we stop? How do we draw that line? No Absolutely. Problem. That's that, another question we have to come that back to. That was the plan when it went up. Trust me when I What was the plan? Now tell me. Exactly what you see right there. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, ready? It's too late to vote? Oh, yeah. um, it's not too late to vote. Go ahead. All right, is everybody voting? No, it's giving me the, the, the refused sign. There you go. Yeah. Right. Stephen, how would you have voted, may I ask? Uh, with the majority. With the majority, all right. 60% of people roughly said no. Now there was 20% that said yes, even to the amount shown here. Because they're developers. <laughs> hey, is anyone who's not a developer, a uh, greedy developer, uh, want to say uh, why they said yes to this? And just be, be very brave. But take some attention off of me for 10 seconds. Does anyone want to say, does anyone want to explain why they said yes to this? No. Yes, ma'am. If I was assuming that there are other things that are part of this and that it's not exactly a huge number, what we don't know, I actually was thinking maybe we just can't tell yet. Right. Um, because we don't know how many units this is. That's right. what we're concerned. Yeah. But if it's a limited number of units and we can hold Stryker property as green space right. and Mount Ivy Park as green space and the Missyongo is developed responsibly for right. the golf course, then this is a decent solution of mixed use, affordable right. housing close to a highway entrance. That's right. And Deborah, honestly, we're going to take that challenge. We're going to prove that developing in one place means you don't have to develop in other places. And, but that's something we have to come back to uh, on. Okay. How many people will live there eventually? And we're going to have to come back with that number also. At least and, and what's the current, like, I would not accept any of these things okay. until I know yep. if you continue building based upon current code without any changes, right. where are we? And until you answer that question, how can right. you possibly evaluate any of these things? So what, 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 what? That's, that's part of the process over yep. the next few months, doing the that's, generic that's environment the playback statement. That's so we're right. Doing a full build out of what is allowed based upon zoning today. Right. That allows you to start vetting some of the initial concepts. That's right. So I, I do want to say, first, I appreciate you being up there because normally I'm the one. Up there. <laughs> That's right. So next time you. Next, yeah. next, next time. Yeah. I do. I really do appreciate the input and the responses back from the public because the part of the shred process is just this. 
and listen for 72 hours, talk to over 300 people, go through stakeholder meetings, get the input, come back with the first draft of some ideas on paper yeah. so you can respond to it. Right. And we're getting that response, that response is invaluable in the process. Right. Okay. The questions that you have are very good, strong, logical questions that cannot be answered in 24 to 48 hours. That's right. The SketchUp model gives you back a feedback with some ideas, ideals, concepts from planning across the world back here that we can react off of, learn from you, then go back and start answering some of the questions you have. I know it can be frustrating to some, they say, I don't have an answer to your question right away, that's good. It's our job now to come back to you over the next two and three months to provide some of those answers. Scale back where things need to be scaled. Identify the balance of preservation and development. Understand where the economics will lie and how it can be benefited or harmed by different scenarios. And that happens over the next set of meetings. This is not a be all end all. We said that from the beginning. We and come back on the 19th and we come back again in February. That's right. And, and specifically, what, um, what Deborah was asking for is a capacity analysis. What you do is you look at the, what you currently have zoned what the zoning is, you figure out how many units would be coming, how much commercial, where you would be at under your existing regulations. You do that, and it's required actually by the state of, of New York and California. You do that in order to figure out, like you said, where you are. So before you say yes to upzoning a spot, you're able to understand how much you're able to provide. Now, hey, here's a question. Of the, of the items that we talked about, and we're almost done with this presentation, and, and, and we'll open it up to question and answer. Um, and, and so of, of, the, of the items, of the principles, of the things that we talked about, uh, which ones are the most important to you? Two and two. Now, we're, we're, just, we're being very abstract with this. And this, for the sake of just five answers, um, we're saying, what's the most important to you? Is it open space? Is it community facilities like library, recreational field schools? Is it the main street kind of concepts we were showing? Is it the affordable housing kind of concepts that we were showing? Or is it the safer streets that we were talking about at the beginning? The all yeah. users of five, but it's multimodal. Yeah. If that's pedestrian. Yeah, that's right. Safe streets system. for all. Missing, like, the big one. You could see, what was the big one? The big one is density. Yeah. So you're basically, it's not a trade off between one versus not. Everybody wants a mix of these things. Mm -hmm. The issue is what's the density? You know, you look at like famous cities where right. these things work. And the big issue is, you know, it's the it's it's the big roads that we don't have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's the real parks, not these little stupid things with the statue in the middle that nobody can use. That doesn't work. Well, all right, it We're doesn't. That, that, maybe maybe in the second picture in front of the ball field, yeah, because it's bigger, yeah. but not in that tiny little area. Right. You know, it's you all need right. space, and and part of the problem is, how do you build out all of that and have you need open space within the designs, and you're basically trying to sell everybody on this massive density with the, with the idea of trading off for preserving things that have already been bought, bonded, already for open space. So, so you're basically saying, here's something that's supposed to be one way, and we're going to let you keep it that way. We're going we're gonna to keep our promise if you do this other thing, and you're not building in the open space and, and the safe, you're not doing all of these things that you need to do with these new designs. You're just right. throwing a lot of density and you're showing them in piecemeal formats instead of looking at everything. So, you know, the issue is, you know, you can draw all those pictures of all those different things, but if you start adding it all up, you know, you're talking like a huge, 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 huge number. And you know what? That's you know, perfect. throwing a little cider place on county owned yeah. land, as cute yeah. as that is, doesn't solve what's going on. I, absolutely. Everything you're saying. God with the rest sense. of the county. Alone. Now, just just remember uh, the way the way these plans work. It's not a like. It's more of a a la carte than a, than a, you have to buy the whole thing. Basically, the ideas that people like that we're showing are the ones that will survive to the plan. I, I, I'm not a developer, so I'm not saying. Look, if you want your cidery, you have to say yes to 500 units. Uh, that's not what we're. But each to. each developer and yeah. each landowner in each different section is going to expect something. So to even think that it's one versus another versus another, it's not reality. False choice. It's a false choice. Yeah. So the issue becomes one of, you know, where's the picture of current build out ideas? Yeah. And then say, well, can we sustain a little bit more here? Or can we do that? And it's the trade off between, hey, I can put a local grocery store here, I can do a few things, get some rateables. Sure. And where's that where's that playoff? And and you're 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 going a little too far without 
putting things in the middle because the reality is there's going to be build out in all these different areas and, and it's and it's very disconcerting to even suggest it's one versus another versus right. another. I don't want to suggest it's one versus another versus another. Um, but let's look at the big map. The big map is the zoom out, the, the, the um, hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to understand. And this is the last few slides. Also, then the last question before you leave is, is the plan headed in the right direction? Negative. So that's, I know, yes, but I just want to keep you here. I'll show you a couple of slides and then we'll ask you that one. Okay. Look, here's the big map. The big map is here, your streets. And we talked about um, improvements to the transportation infrastructure. Uh, this shows basically um, existing conditions. So right now, most of your, uh, most of this part of the community is essentially single family house areas. And we're actually not proposing anything for that. Your single family house areas are, are stable. Now, yeah. they, face, they face issues that also, I, I've, I've said, are, are unsolvable. But let's just, let's just call it pink and let's just say, we're not proposing anything in those areas. That's where you live. Uh, those areas aren't in transition. Um, now, the other thing that you notice is you've got a lot of this dark purple, which is, uh, as someone mentioned before, uh, schools and churches, it got cut off. But in most cases, my understanding is these are areas that are not paying taxes. Uh, and it's some sort of quasi-public. Um, these are the areas that we've been talking about tonight. When I turn it into yellow, this is basically, because uh, a lot of this seems very dramatic, but we're talking about, you know, 202, this was the orchard, this was the striker property, here's the golf course, here's the uh, ballpark. We didn't even talk about the county state. Uh, we haven't had to talk with them about what their long-term future is there. And these are the areas that we've been talking about. Also, some of this is New Hempstead, and I understand it's not your community. You should add the Patrick Farm to that. Yes, uh, continuing uh, message in this is to, uh, we just need to zoom out, add Patrick Farm. Patrick Farm needs to be part of this conversation. People felt that Patrick Farm was too controversial. If we brought Patrick Farm into this, it would be incapable. A lot of people would feel too much emotion to talk about anything else. So they. That's my understanding of why well, that, we That's it. your understanding. I'm not sure that's the reality. Yeah, it's okay. top of mind for all so of us. So why, <laughs> why do you have a county-owned site included here and you're not including the 35 acres adjacent of a town land on South Mountain Road? Show the me. Mayor, is that the Mary Mulberry Can you show me where that is? It might just be because of the right of the county-owned park. This. Yeah. All right, so you're saying that is what? Uh, I'm just saying, why are you not including a correct inventory of all of these spaces. Okay, right. probably because we've only been working on this for two days. Uh, but let me tell you this, uh, I would love to give you this map for you to redline it or anybody. All this is gonna be online and you can help us get the boundaries correct. Okay. In order to do a high level exercise, a lot of the details we got wrong. And that seems like a big thing to get wrong. Yeah. Where are you showing, I'm not seeing the potential rail line. That's the arc, the green line. This is the rail trail that we talked about. A rail trail. Yeah. Okay. Now a lot of people have been talking about it going all the way through New Hempstead. Um, how, and however, that's a question for New Hempstead, and there's a lot of people very the concerned about that. The problem is you can't really take it. You can take it through New Hempstead up until a certain point. Sure. And then, unfortunately, certain people. Right. It's in their backyard. It's, well, not so much the backyard. Yep. That's okay. Yeah. But they have blocked it in Spring Valley yep. and Muncie that yep. you can't utilize it. It's that makes broken. sense. The purple areas here are the areas that we showed development occurring. Okay. Unfortunately, the rail uh, property took me so long for any property ownership. That's right. Right. It's out of the question anyway. That's right. But they can pick it up yep. on the other side. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons why we didn't show that line continuing. Right. So anyway, uh, the, I think all of the development that we were showing, with the exception of the little spot at the orchard rate, was located in these purple spots. We, we've, we've colored outside the bounds of trees a little. We had a conversation with New Hempstead. They've, they, some of them are here, so we, we also created a center here. What we're saying is pick where you want to develop, incentivize development where you want it, and pick where you don't want development, and, uh, and work to keep development out of those areas. And that's, that's the big map. I have, I have a question about that, though, because you're, you're, you are saying well, maybe you could do it here and not there. But by the same token, you were, when you were responding so violently to the 202 area, yep. you said, well, guess what? This this is owned by a developer, and he's going to put something in there. Right. So how are we going to control what a particular development, the 
developer does and say, oh no, but this guy already did that, so you can't. All right, here's how you do it. You create a community plan. You get ahead of them. You I create think a... that's what this is all about. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Welcome to, to, to my life. Yeah, what we're, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a vision that you like. Because actually, the development community would like not to be fought. They would actually like us to come up with something that uh, was palatable to everybody. Still respects their constitutional right to develop in a capitalist system, but, uh, but is something that people would like. So, so that's what I'm saying. You can't. You do have control over what happens in the private in, in certain areas. It doesn't. Doesn't really sound like. Well, based on let, let let's go back to the Patrick Barn, which is also the right. other large elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, and I know that it wasn't your your uh, design in yeah. terms of picking this corner of this part of the county. Right. But I'm curious because the supervisors here, how the Patrick Farm actually got left out of this charrette, since it's so. Congress to what we're talking about here. How could it have been left out? Because it's not in the geographic area. It's in a separate area. It's, it's, right it's not separate. Michael, do you really or believe that? that? That's We're gerrymandering. No. Do you really no. believe that, Michael? It says GM, it, there, there's no other, unless you're going to do a whole thing just on that, which would totally be a way of making people crazy. It, this is the only area it belongs to because it's like whatever you're going to sh shit on Pomona on one side, you're going to shit on Pomona on the other side. So either come up with solutions that make That's right. everybody well, happy. Let me, let me just on both sides. Can I help you a second? No. So it should be similar. The, basically, there's two, there's two, bang, two conversations about this. The people said that whatever we do over here sets a precedent for that. We say mm -hmm. yes to development here, it's going to, then all of a sudden, presumptively, we're going to say that then everyone said yes to development there. <laughs> So there's a feeling that it was kept out for a specific reason, all right? The other reason I think is, look, we're doing this planning process. <coughs> the people, a lot of people would have liked to have weighed in on that site, and they would have loved to have colored it green. A lot of people feel like that little fragment up there doesn't really belong with the middle of uh, the town. It feels like it's more like the outskirts of the town. And, and, uh, and, they've, uh, and I hope I'm articulating that correctly. Now, the, the other side of it is, planners, uh, like I was saying, uh, in order to, in order to give you a one to 600 foot base map, I, I, we, took, we had to zoom in. That way you're able to see the houses and see the parks. You could understand when one map, uh, the, the study area, uh, and that's like a planner thing from someone who doesn't understand this place. And, uh, and another thing is, you know, the, uh, the planners felt like there's, there's some logical uh, ways to divide it, the east side, the middle, and the west, and it's probably just a mistake made by an outsider. Uh, so oh, that's interesting because I thought it wasn't you guys that made that decision. I thought you were mandated by the town on what sections you were going to. It, it's not mandated. It was it was a conversation that we uh -huh. had. Okay. Ultimately, these maps came out of my office. Okay. Um, now at the same time, I really do believe, and I understand. I, you feel like there's dark forces pulling strings, okay. and I, I'm not necessarily saying that there isn't. But what? <laughs> but, but my feeling is, my feeling is this, and this is honest, my sincere opinion. What do you mean by dark? <laughs> oh good, let's get into that. Um, my, my feeling is that uh, there were a lot of disadvantages to not including the Patrick Farm. Again, I worried that if we included Patrick Farm, I read about Patrick Farm in the newspapers, that that would be the only thing we'd be talking about. And I was hoping we could talk about other places. It's going to greatly impact the, impact but just, the area. But just that way you know, the, the town has promised to tie this all together. You know, we are going to go to all the different places and when we finally start presenting this thing in full, these places are all connected and we're going to be showing all the areas. It's not like you're not going to get a chance to talk about Patrick Farm you again. You can't talk about 202 without talking about Patrick Farm. I agree with you. If, you know, if we took out a map, we would see that 202 actually, guess what, connects to Patrick Farm. And, and it feels like it's part of the same corridor. Because it is. Yeah, that's right. Because, because, because it actually is. And, 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 and truthfully, yeah. there, are major, right. there are major opportunities. There are major opportunities for building like public yep. pathways and, yes. and public recreation spaces have been right. recommended to the developers right. in exchange, you know, for, for changes in zoning. Right. Let's create those pathways that connect into this plan. Right. And actually include Pomona in the planning because they're smack dab in the middle. That sounds great. You know, and, and, and it's just it's, it seems ludicrous if you're trying to make a bigger picture and really build the concept of of you know people having spaces that all connect. You yeah, have right. To do it that yeah. way. That's right. If connections and connectivity is the biggest part of, of uh, this project, okay. bringing so bringing cool. people together and bringing things together physically, then why why do we isolate one part? Look, all of your all of these concerns are valid. Uh, 
And I hope as we go through the longer process, we're able to address them. And believe me, we have great designers uh, who I think are very sensitive uh, uh, when it comes to development, and I think that they could help on that problem. Okay. All right, but look, hey, we've been here for a while. I want to give the people the chance to leave. A chance to leave. This is the last question, and then I promise we're here as long as you want to be, and we'll <laughs> talk about all the issues. Um, so just let's just do this one question, then we'll take. We'll just do this one. Keep that polling. And then we'll take your question. Unless, Miss Emily, you feel like it is essential to this question. All right, let's, let's poll first. All right. Do you think the draft ideas presented tonight are on the right track? Yes, probably yes, can't tell yet, or no? Polling has been open. People are still a couple votes coming in. Probably yes. It's growing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think everybody has voted. This says this is the important one. Has everybody voted? All right. And now this is the timer, in case you want to change your mind. And look, um, yeah, just vote whatever you think. Our feelings won't be hurt, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back with extra drafts. All right. 40% roughly said no. Almost half the room said no, plan is not headed in the right direction. Uh, we have 20, roughly 30% said uh, yes or probably yes, and 37% said can't tell you. Now that's interesting. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna, we're gonna do another, uh, another pinup. Uh, we're gonna come back with new designs and answers to some of the questions that you have. Uh, so, so there's people here that I think uh, would be interested in continuing to attend this process. Do you have the ability to actually take these little clickers and, and have and hand out two different ones to the people who will make money versus the people who are living here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, would, it would be interesting. That's a fairer way of looking because it's all about balancing and it's, you know, there obviously are different you know, competing interests, and the goal is well, that we can give come up with a solution. to the people who have the money. <laughs> <laughs> and one the yeah, let's give five to the stakeholders, the people who are affected, and let's give one to the to the investors. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, hard, it's hard, hard. It's hard to look at this in a in a little pocket, like right. not considering Patrick Farm and everything else. Yeah. We have a lot of people that are leaving who've lived here for 40 or 50 years yep. because they're afraid of what's happening mm -hmm. here right. and the traffic increases and everything else. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we need to consider that too, that segment, <coughs> senior segment. We have a lot of seniors in this area and the walkable communities are really nice right. and they, they are the way of the world, the future, yeah. and I think they can be really good. I've seen some somewhere, I can't tell you where, where they actually had cars coming in the back and then they had the walkable community in the front and I thought that was really nice because yeah. mm -hmm. you come out on your porch, you say hi to your neighbor, maybe the store is down the street, but the cars are all coming in and I think that had garages, yeah. which in this community, our yes. residents want and need garages. Yeah. Even if they don't bring their car into the garage, they want the garage. Right. <laughs> or an overhang. I, you know, it's, po you know, it's possible. Cardboard. One of, one of the problems with what I did is uh, you see this overhead view and all of a sudden all these houses appear and that's when everybody fell off their chairs. Um, what we didn't show is some of the amenities like you're describing, like how you keep cars away from the streets where kids are playing or the, or the front porches. Uh, in order to do something fast, I, I didn't do justice to some of the, these designs. And um, well, for two days, I think you did a really nice job. Okay? I will appreciate that. Uh, it may not be right for our community. <laughs> we may need right. to work on it a little. That's right. Basically, you did a very nice job. Pretty pictures. Sure. But <laughs> even like your bike path, which I have, would love to have a bike path. I've yep. gone down 202. I've, in the past, uh, responded to the town. Yeah. I don't think you were here, here at the time, Michael. but. Uh, glass was on the road. Now I only yeah. take a stretch of 202 because I don't want to drive ride right all of 202. Right. And there was so much debris. Uh, you know, the, we have money. a little bit of a shoulder. Right. And when I do my, I'm on the other side of 202, so I do my little run of streets, where my husband and I go up to the park, 
Yeah. Because there is no place to ride here safely, pleasant. Have you corrected something yeah. with this report? The, the well, just we're a little bit more professional cards here. Absolutely, we can. Let me just respond to that. Uh, yeah, we'll be exactly. courteous to to Maroon and made a response. You know, one of the things about like condensing this whole plan into just two hours is to show you the big things, right? The small things like like the code enforcement and uh, giving the firefighters what they need, or just keeping glass out of the street because who's going to ride a bike if there's glass on the street? You know, it, it doesn't lend itself to the big screen and, and all this. Um, but but the the little moves that you make in order to make your community better, really in a community like this is probably the most impactful and the least controversial. And and that's that's a very good point. All right, sure. Let's start. Yes, I'm sorry. Say, I've been living here for thirty one years. Yep. I get in my car, I go to the supermarket to get groceries, to get things that I need to live in my life. Mm -hmm. There is no grocery. You're going to take the grocery down, you're going to build a little town mm -hmm. so we can find, try to find a parking place okay, so I can go to three or four stores mm -hmm. to get what I need. Mm -hmm. That's not the way people live around here. Sure. So with all due respect to your plan, you are not considering the people that live here. You're saying you better move out because otherwise you're going to have to find a parking place to go to the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. That's great, but that's, that's the not city. the way people live in suburbia. That's right. We'll have to go to town of Haverstraw to go to ShopRite. So we won't have a supermarket in, in the town of Ramapo. And I just think you did not consider that. You took away the supermarket. You built a little town right. with a nice little square. Good for you. Great architecture. I'd rip it apart because you don't, you're don't. you not considering how people live. All right, all right. Um, well, our designers heard that. Uh, you're right. You don't want to... You know, often you don't want to get rid of your Target or your or your supermarket uh, in favor of artisanal deli sandwiches for Starbucks and boutique upscale furniture because that stuff isn't what we need every day, right? You don't want to get rid of your neighborhood pharmacy, your CVS, uh, in favor of uh, you know um, the yoga studio. I don't know uh, because you can because what you need is that pharmacy. You're right. We can't do a plan that's for someone else. It needs to be a plan done for locals based upon the, how they actually live their life. Why does it help the people who are here and now see all this plan? Right. It doesn't help us at all. The, it idea, our life worse. the idea is that this private property is owned by someone already. Right. So there's and a gun to our head. And there's a gun to our head. Because, great, we live in a place where a developer can come in and do whatever the hell they want. But we do have a town here. Say, no, you can't. Do you can. Wrong Absolutely. Wrong. You, can't do that. you can. And tell you what, if that's what you want to do, if you want to, and honestly, I mean this earnestly, if you feel like your best avenue is just to fight, in a lot of communities it is. And a lot of communities, especially in New York, have been successful. Then, then absolutely. My job is sort of to try to find a middle ground. But look, uh, we had this whole baby splitting analogy that we had, we talked about before in King Solomon. I had that wrong. That's right, I had it all wrong because for a lot of people, there is no. The bottom line is there are some times you, where you don't want to compromise. And, uh, and if you feel like, like I, I'm, I'm making recommendations, if you don't want to take them, it's fine. There are times you can compromise, but when you have something already in place, right. that's when you know, somebody comes in from the outside and you have to give him what he wants, that's what we object to. Absolutely. That's what the happened. That's why I'm very passionate about. Absolutely. Just remember, Absolutely. Just remember the developers aren't going to aren't going to do a meeting like this, and the developers aren't going to go back to their workshop and keep trying until they get it right. Just so you know. A comment. Here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excuse me. There is one exception to a lot of this discussion. The Stryker property is owned by the town of Aramico. Yes. In Mr. Speck's comment about the 2019 budget, he said he would not be selling that. Any surplus Ramapo land, which the Stryker property has been designated as, stri as right. surplus land. Okay, yep. fine. What's going to keep that? Has not been. Has not been. What's going to keep it from being sold to a developer down the road who's going to ignore? Is there a way to protect that property? Yeah, they want you yeah. to sign yeah. a legal document well, stating no, so. There are, is right. there a way to protect That's that option. property? Hey, remember, now. remember when we started with this? We said something like, "Lands bought for protection should be protected." I hope that uh, if, if you would, what mechanism would be, I don't know yet. All I'm telling you is that we heard you, that the striker property was bought. My understanding is the striker property was bought for a certain purpose, and the community here wants it to remain, you know, that purpose. And, 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 and I know we have to get out of here, but there's another parcel of land which is on the north side 
um, the Scotty with the community, which by the way is a 70 year old community. And that's the Mulberry Clark property, which is also being looked at for development, if I'm not mistaken. You can't build on that property. That is a historical piece of property with a cemetery and, and very old structure. No, nothing. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I don't even think you. I don't even think I drew it. Yeah. I mean, Excuse me. Just to point information. No. I'm not that's aware of any plans to do anything on Mowbray Clark that's uh, purchased for historical or, or uh, open space. There's no no plans for that. There's some confusion about so that. Are there plans for Stryker? There's no plans currently. Nothing. Currently. That's not what the newspaper Hey, hey, don't focus your negative energy on me. Um, <laughs> 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 no, you're around all the time. <laughs> no, just keep, look, his job, his job, his job <laughs> nine to five is negative energy. Yes. So just focus this way. Yes, just sir. Just two quick comments. Yep. Number one, uh, about the uh, 202, uh, the little strip mall and the uh, how to develop alongside of it. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And so on. Yep. Uh, there is, a, is the uh, it needs to show a little bit more in so that far. context because there is an actual supermarket uh, stop and shop right down from that. Okay. And uh, if can that is planned to be made, pardon me? Could be connected. I could be connected. Well, well anything's possible. But what I'm saying is we do have a supermarket nearby currently, and if it's kept zoned for that kind of use, right. then it isn't just a little sandwich shop going in so between housing and so on. We do have a major supermarket. Sure. So we'll show a few things to that. Just, so, minute, just yeah. a minute. Just a minute. So if it's showed in that kind of a context, we do have a supermarket. If that's intended to be kept for that kind of purpose and more, then, then that is good. And across the street, if there's something we know about, of course, that would be helpful right. in, in developing or pre presenting that part. The second part was uh, uh, the Patrick Farm. Yeah. Needs to be part of it and the whole 202 corridor going down there. Sure. And it can't be just, you know, an, after, an afterthought. Yeah. It has to be part yeah. of the initial startup and it has to be. Okay. Think about the whole corner uh, in, as one. The corridor yeah. right up. And I didn't know about the stuff. So Jason, I just want to add a little bit about the zoning on Route 202. I know I've heard quite a few, quite a few of you talking about why should we change 202 from what it is now, and I think that part of what brought this this conversation between uh, myself, Ian, the design team, and ter understanding what to do on 202 as a commercial corridor is that I don't. know, Some of you may not be aware, but it's zoned for mixed use zone two right now it requires 60 percent residential for new construction i'm sorry not patrick farm route 202 near in the commercial corridor just a moment across the street is two acre zone that's not the area i'm referring to you're talking about in, in, in mount ivy yes so the commercial area that we've been discussing tonight Half that commercial area is zoned for mixed use two zoning, which is, you're talking about buildings that are multiple stories. We require 60% residential, 40% a mix of commercial or retail office. And currently, our regulations are a hybrid of a, a big box store with a very vast parking lot in the front, with tall buildings, with not much consideration for the design and the relation to the neighborhood. What we're attempting to do through this process is we hired this really excellent urban design team to figure out how do we retool that regulation to shift from what we require today, which I don't know how many would see a three or four story building on top of stop and shop to see how that, how that would play out. I don't know if that would work. That would not be the prettiest building, at least in my perspective. So we're trying to retool our regulations tonight to figure out what's the best way to retool that. And that's, that's, that's really where we're coming from. And I think stop and shop I think that would be the centerpiece of a community there, rather than a something that's removed. Yeah, that's a good point. Respond. There's two shopping centers this side of the supermarket. Both of them are almost <coughs> empty. Okay, so I see what you mean about build, but you need a place for the community to be able to get resources. Wait, you want to build a town, Absolutely a little right. town, a little nice community, but you need to be able to access resources, and you have not considered that at all. That's my concern. Seven, yeah. So, in okay. other words, we'll retool that. So, what he just I, said. I think there's a chance we could actually keep redrawing 202 so we come up with something that is no, works it's... for locals and, and uh, has the right uh, mix and, and uh, has the right density. 
if so I'm if I'm one second, if I'm wrong, then I'm then I'm wrong, and and you don't have to accept it. Um, but if you, in other words, that whole big project that you put there, yeah, right, that yep. is, that took away the stopping. So no, no, it's it not. Yeah. It yeah. so it did it 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 so that's his strip malls. Well, what's the Rambo? The Mount Ivy yeah. Diner is down here in the corner left of the hang shop. Stop and shop is way up here. No, yeah. 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 The Mount Ivy yeah. Diner is way down here. Yeah. Right next to Well, that's the parking lot of the Mount Ivy Diner. Mount Ivy Oil Market Diner. Stop and shop. 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 So put that big monstrosity back. And then you put, then there was a second one, wasn't it, to get rid of the strip malls? It continued, was there another one? Yeah. 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 But the, no, the stuff and shop is the part of it. No, it's not the stuff. The stuff and shop is the part of it. No, it's not Look, guys, some people are saying this is the stop and shop. Is this the stop and shop? No. Hey, look, look, blame me. Look, you said you had a lot of, you, one second, you had a lot of images shown very fast from far away. One of the things we hope to do, if we have, is you're going to have a chance to sit and look at this more carefully at some point. The traffic so, light is with the stop and shop. The traffic light is with the stop and, the stop and shop. Yes. I apologize for not giving you time to understand it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What makes you think is that draw in a candle maker? couple of Starbucks, a deli, and an upscale furniture store. When you can't even, when you can't even show the little strip malls. Yeah. Was it your question? How are you going to bring business in? When we look at the demographics of the area around it, uh, most of the people within driving distance are not interested in what's being offered there. Our suggestion is, if you look at the median household incomes and the people around who now live there, look, when it was built, it probably made sense. One second, guys, one second. When it was built, it probably made sense, but the demographics have changed, the, the people around it have changed. We were we looked at the demographics and we're trying to propose something that would work for the people that are there. Well, the rents have gone up too much. Yes, it could. But let me tell you, that, that building is in pretty rough shape. But, but, in, but possibly, sure. Yeah. Oh, right. one, one question. Is yes, Stop and Shop, is, is that yeah, being proposed for building? Because that place is sinking. Anybody My understanding is Stop and Shop is outside of our study area. Uh, that, okay, now, I, I, I withdraw my remark. No, it's no problem. Look, your, your point was still valid. We can't, and, I, and actually it's a critique that we're still going to take the, to the drawing board. We can't design for, uh, you know, the two Starbucks and the three artisanal sandwich places and the 16 pizza places for tourists. You know, this place has to work for locals, and that was a very valid critique. Yes, sir. How are you going to do this without widen the roads for turn left and turn right to access this stuff. Yeah, you're, right. exact, you're exactly right. You would. And our only our only concern is that um, be careful where you widen because you can never take it back. Coming you're right. You, you couldn't, it's hard to put any, it's hard to imagine now putting any more traffic on that. Additional traffic lights. So now there's going yep. to be another two or three traffic lights in there. Before you get there. And then if we go to Pomona Road, that development here on the, on the, on the stadium, right. there's going to have to be at least two or three traffic lights. Well, look, let me tell you. It's going to have to widen the road. Yeah, look, no, I don't think anybody wants to see a lot of traffic lights on 202. No. Um, so so the, you make a very good point. Now, you don't necessarily have, a lot of times a stop and shop will come in, they'll demand a traffic light. You can say no to that. And there are long corridors, especially scenic corridors. There is one that had stopped. No? This is, this is not possible without this. I, I, would, I would argue that, well, look, questions remain. Look, I, I know for a lot of you this is, this is a very difficult process, and you weren't given very much time to consider it. Um, I appreciate all the time that you've given to this, and uh, we've learned a lot from you. Um, this is a first pinup, like we say in architecture school, and there's this all, this always multiple pinups. 
as hard as this was, I really do think that there were a couple places where we found some agreement. And, uh, and I look forward to coming back with you with, uh, with those designs. Can I ask one final question? Yes, ma'am. Yep, go ahead. Um, the gentleman in the back, I'm yes. sorry. What, what's your name? I'm Ben. And you're from? Oliver. Uh, okay. Is it typical for a community that's this large and this diverse with um, partially a controversial history in development to be moving at such a lightning pace? I, I, well, from my perspective, I've been doing this about 25 years. I know my boyish good looks say that I'm not. Uh, but in this situation, I don't view it as a very fast pace because this is only the beginning. This is the first day, the first 72 hours of the process. So when we do a planning charrette like this, the purpose is to hear from as many people as we can up front. So over 300 people, I mean, I can't see behind this wall, probably 20 people back there. So over 300 people participated in a 72-hour process. We're coming back again in a few weeks with some revisions. We're getting a website put together for more public input. We're having additional meetings, more stakeholders, more steering committees. So it's not a very fast-paced slamming, as you, as you said. You, um, you have a six-month timeline for the entire town, no? No. No. It's for this, for strat this, this northern strategic area, not for the entire town. We're doing a – so what's happening is when, when we get the flow chart and the infographic created for the website, what you're going to see is a timeline that begins with GEIS and strategic areas that are being reviewed. G -I -G Generic environmental impact. Statement. Why is it that they start Can I finish this it? area? Sure, sure. Let me finish. I, 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 I have to really appreciate Jason because Jason's been interrupted maybe 250 times uh, and he's been very, very patient. So I'd like them to finish this and I'll answer any questions people have. I'm back to your thing. So we have three main study areas. As Michael said at the beginning, Klatsky, uh, NIMTEC is beginning the review of the traffic counts associated with the transportation corridor that is the bane of many people's existence, 59. As that's going through, we have an area in northern Roundpole that's, that's facing many, many development pressures. It's probably the only spot in the town with open land that developers have that are ready to go. So we're now moving this process to the northern strategic plan because in the Muncie area, you don't want to jump ahead of the traffic information and traffic in the transmission planning. So we're beginning this process, come back in December, back in January. In February, we'll have more of a, of a definitive strategic plan for you to react to, having listened for three months of input. At the same time that we're beginning to bring that back to you, we're beginning the Muncie plan. And as that moves forward, we begin the Western Round Post. So it's happening sequentially as you go through. At the end of it, we'll have three strategic plans and a comprehensive plan for the entire town. Would you agree or disagree that maybe during this process, which as you stated, is going to take a while because of traffic studies in other parts of the town, that perhaps there should be a moratorium on building? Uh, moratorium is up to each individual town. I, again, I've been doing this a long I'm time. I'm asking you, would, would that be a um, suggestion from your expertise for this town? I believe that if based, what upon seen. based upon development pressures, a moratorium is definitely something that should be considered. Thank you. And what do you think about the fact that there's currently an amendment to the comprehensive plan that's still going through in an area that's supposed to be part of your purview, Hillcrest? Well, that's all processes that we're being involved in as we go forward. So that comprehensive plan amendment is part of the Muncie part of the strategic plan. So right now we're up. focusing, right now this meeting here is the beginning part of the north. As we get into the Muncie part, all that comes into play as well. So you're going to pick that up as part I, of your Hillcrest? Yes. Okay. And now I'm, I'm focusing the guy's name. Are you aware that there is already a traffic study that talks about the Muncie area and actually suggested that there be a moratorium? And how old is that uh, study? 2018? 2016. Only two, two years ago. Yeah. And we were, we were in the middle of cultivating and cull culling and reading through all the previous plans. You guys have had a lot of planning happening. Well, the problem is, is that things are still going on. There, there are new buildings going up on Route 306 and Blauvelt Road, and there's still all sorts of hearings going on for, for the properties. So, and, 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 that's, and that's why the lady in front probably asked the question about the moratorium. Correct. Okay. So, uh, so again, every community, every board looks at moratoriums differently. I can't speak for the uh, town board here. Well, they did promise one well, last did, year. Uh, before the board, a local law says vote on a moratorium. Have no fear. I believe that they are going to do that for three to six months and revisit it again 
the issue was the GML came back from the county. It needs to be adapted a little bit. We didn't have a full board, but I believe the board has committed during this period of time to review processes, procedures, and protocols. And I don't speak for the supervisor, but I can tell you that misinformation is unfortunate. We're going to give you the accurate information. Well, you should have there been is more going accurate than hey, that. Hey, hey. Yeah. There will be, you can interrupt them, you're not going to interrupt me. <laughs> there will be, there, there will be a moratorium in this town for us to slow down a little bit and catch our breath. That I'm sure the town board has independently and individually agreed to. Just let us get it right. And, and that's a, it's a good statement, Mona, because moratoriums allow planning to go in place without the uh, threat of being developing before you finish your planning process. So when communities do choose to do a moratorium, they normally go along the same line in the six month process of a planning for, for a program. Courts have upheld moratoriums for six months, and courts have also upheld one more extension of that six months. So I don't think that we're rushing. I think that this is, as I said earlier, and Jason didn't, you didn't get a chance to acknowledge who it was besides the like or comment from Mike. Yeah, I promise not to wear that in a public meeting. Uh, this process is moving along. We have lots of opportunity for input. Some people, actually almost everybody here is passionate about different parts of the community, and I like hearing that passion. I like the impassioned pleas as well as the impassioned direction and directives that are given to us as designers as we work together to build a plan that everyone can come together. The consensus is when both sides come together. Not everyone leaves happy with everything, but they come working together towards a better future. And that's part of this process. That's part of why we're here. That's what makes me excited to be sitting here, hearing people attacking, promoting, supporting, and denying. The whole process is what makes the planning a practice, a profession, and an opportunity. How did you notify people? Because I live in town about the ability to monitor. And the way I found out was day number two from the newspaper. Now, if I didn't read the newspaper, I wouldn't have known that. Right. And, and we, we, we understand. A lot of people, but now there are a lot of people that aren't here and don't have a clue. We, we, we understand that the, uh, the communication and the marketing and the uh, publicity for this meeting process wasn't the best. And because of that, we. You think? Thank you for this sidebar. I appreciate that, ma'am. And uh, what we have done is change the schedule of public meetings to incorporate more opportunities. So instead of coming back in December, January with a more finished product, we're opening up more opportunities of public process. It's gonna be on the website. Next week, we'll have the Envision Roundtable website so that everyone can see that. I do wanna thank Coupon and Rose. They did a great job on Facebook by getting it out there. Uh, Lower Hudson and uh, the Journal put it out there. Uh, we're gonna continue the opportunity to promote. Hopefully, the 50, 60 people here have given enough information, at least an email contact, so they can get emails from us, so they can also forward it on. So I think that you'll see 300 people in three days, you'll see another 600 people in the next meeting, next set of meetings we have. But we also have email lists and mailing Correct. lists that not everybody goes to the website every day. We hope that every, what's your name, ma'am? Supervisor. Carol, thank you. I know Jason did a great job memorizing everyone's names for the last three days, uh, but I'm not as, as good at that. But everyone here is invested in this process, and we hope that you'll come back again in December and you're going to bring five to six more people each person. Because we hope that you want to now see how this ends, how this grows. And this process is your process, so we hope and we invite your participation in continuing to spread the word as we go forward over the rest of this project. You have your hand up again. Yeah, so. As Jason, you did a phenomenal job. Well, thank you, Sammy. Yes, sir. Your recommendation. Yes, sir. Your recommendation. Yes, sir. And Michael is here, and and I, and I know he has said it, but it has to be between the enforcement mm -hmm. going forward. Sure. Not waiting until this thing gets approved. I mean, if we have a moratorium, it needs to go. Um, and the court systems and whatever else. Because the trust factor in the building department is non-existent yeah. from me. Yeah, yeah. So that's number one. Number two, you have the volunteer firefighters. Yeah. And yes, one of the members are here. You need to be able to, I mean, that type of, when you're, if you're telling me 10 foot in between and everything else, you need to understand that impact. Yeah. Also, depending on which group of people or whatever it is, because I know it's open to everybody, what impact does that have other schools. Yeah. We have a public school system that is that really got raped. Really yes. got raped. The other schools that you have, that you do have, 
In other words, if you're building the community, you're putting the stores, you're putting that, that these developers not only should be able to play a nice playground for these kids, or whoever comes in, you know, a school gotta be local. And then whatever it is to rebuild what East Ramco used to be was the number one school district that was here. Yes. So hey Jason, one more thing I want to share. Yep. And it's, it's in the, the designers did a great job uh, depicting and illustrating, but they're concepts. They're not final designs. And, and the great part about computers is that you can design something, you can sketch it up. The bad thing is people think that's the final picture because it looks so real. Right, yeah, and does. people say, oh, I have a monument here. We can't have a monument there. Or I don't like that awning or that design. It doesn't look like it's massing. It's the concept of do, how do we create a main street off of a transportation hub? How do we incorporate affordable housing, modern housing? How do we incorporate townhouses? Where can we put commercial businesses that is not at this stage a site-specific design where what building is going to house what supermarket or what pharmacy or what bar on one site? It's conceptually. How can we re-envision a community that's going to balance preservation, open space, commercial, and residential? If we had a, an opportunity to convert to convert this stadium from a parking lot with a stadium to a neighborhood and a community with a stadium, what concepts can we have for connectivity, for transportation, for open space? Okay. Yeah. But with illustrative computers, it looks so final. It does, so yeah. what I want to say to you is that today is not final. It is not the end, but only the beginning of the process. And for you all to come out so quickly, I appreciate that. Yeah. I know you appreciate, even though you're sitting there taking no, uh, no. the front, you appreciate <laughs> as a planner the impact and the input. Absolutely. So I think it's been a great opportunity for tonight, and I want to thank everyone for coming. Again, here. the worst thing is, is when you go to communities and they, there's no input, because you're, we really do want to get it right. So, um, so yeah, again, you know, I really do mean it. I appreciate all the time. Some people have been here the entire time. Uh, like Deborah, she's got her hand up. She's been very patient. Her head has been up the entire time. But um, go ahead, Deborah. What, what would you like to say? I, I wanted to ask a question because you guys are going to come back on the 19th, which is Thursday. Yes. And as you know, one of my bigger criticisms of, of this process is right. that it it started on this one area before, and I and I and I and I don't want to suggest that you know doing this area by area thing is bad. I, I think it actually makes sense. I agree. But I think that one of my criticisms was that. It didn't start with the full big picture, right? And so what's happening is you 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 are starting with maps that don't have all the information you guys need, um, and you're presenting it to us without including things like where are all the wetlands, where's all the yeah. pipelines, where's all the you know like there, there's some really big picture you know sort of starting point situations, and and honestly that that was the reason the Patrick Farm thing kind of fell apart yeah. it's because nobody started yeah. with that where are we so it's the where are we with our environmental constraints I think it's great that you're saying you need to widen the roads but we're all sitting thinking that there are areas of 202 that's just impossible so we're all thinking like you know you're not seeing what we know sure and so it's happening that makes you look bad because you're putting forward these great yeah. ideas that right. are, that we're all like that's fantasy, right? Because you're not starting with that initial homework, and like you're saying, oh, let's widen certain roads, and like if 306 is a you know big problem, you put up pictures about 306, and yet they're already like really far into the process of putting you know not widening 306 but putting sidewalks in 306. So, mm. is this even a fantasy? To consider possibly the better thing other than the sidewalks, if there's already one side, maybe the better thing is widening 306. But where are we in this process? Is this, you know, you know, you're sort of pieing in the sky right now, and there's some real starting logistical, you know, fix things that are going on. And I just feel that, you know, I'm expecting you to do what you're doing. But the problem that I keep reacting to is that it's so premature because the homework hasn't been done first. And I really feel that it's not the best use of you guys as a resource at this moment in time. Right. And that like, if, if you guys had spent this week taking stock of all of those issues and building all of those maps and getting the general feelings before you did this portion of the charrette right. and then came in and thought about it, I think that instead of having that bar being like, you know, who, who knows, right. <laughs> you might actually 
then have more of a yes, no. You might have a better reaction. Well, look, I, you know, I agree with everything you're saying. I just, as a general approach um, to communities like this, I tend to start with a conversation. And the reason is, sometimes, some communities, you can spend six months reading documents, and it's very expensive to pay a planner to, to read all this stuff. Um, and I like to start with a conversation. But you're right, it reveals the things you don't know, right? Like, like the wetlands map and the, the watersheds and the big maps you start with first. Yeah, those are just basic. Those now, are to, they exist. To do justice to, to LaBerge's team, uh, you know, if we had um, David up here, he could have done a different presentation that would have yeah, talked more about that. But, but absolutely noted. When we come back, let's start with uh, zoom dot maps that, that talk about constraints and wetlands and where the water's going and, and, uh, and, and things and uh, what projects are, are underway. You tell you, now we know better which, like, instead of spending a year reading all this stuff, we're really clear on what we need to, on the homework we need to do. And so I appreciate your patience of letting us, letting may, us do May that. I make one statement, please? Yeah, certainly. And then you, you won't hear from me. <laughs> With all due respect to our town supervisor, welcome to the community. I've lived here all my life. And when we used to have things like properties being sold or uh, noted as surplus. There were notices that went around and nailed to, you know, telephone poles in the paper. So a little bit more transparency as time goes on, because had Skyview Acres not been notified about the vote that was about to take place on the Stryker property, hours. that would have been said and done, and we literally had hours to respond to that. So just a little more transparency because it makes it feel like there's a lot of underhanded business taking place down at the town of Ramapo, which we know has been of recent. Uh, let me just address that, and I understand what you're saying, and the way it was put on was a mistake. The vote that night would have been to surplus it, but not necessarily to sell it, which is a separate action. But at this point, nothing's happening. It's not been surplused. No plans to sell any property. What we actually did, what, what I wanted to do, even though it's not something that's required under the law, we created a committee of town employees, the um, Town Asset Review Committee, to study all the properties that we have, whether uh, they should be kept, sold, dedicated, repurposed, every single property, uh, not just um, not just the Conklin property, but hey, but, the striker. The striker. The striker but, but no, wait, but from the no, 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 no. You're, let me finish. Let me finish. Right. We actually, the purpose is we have, we have. Um, I'm on the committee. We have a council person on the committee. We have the finance director, the parks and recreation director. We have an attorney on the committee. We have another employee who's like our property manager. But we're going to have public meetings uh, where people will be allowed to participate and come in and give your opinions and hear what's happening. The first one we have tentatively, and we may have to change it because we might have a conflict with the next charrette. Uh, we didn't realize at the time, December 19th at 7 p.m. at Town Hall, we may move it a day or two in either direction so people can go to both. Uh, but that will be the first of at least two meetings. When we go to the meeting on that date, the committee will have, have some information, we'll present all the properties to the public, receive input, receive participation, not make any decisions that night, come back maybe a month later, 45 days later, whatever, whatever works for everybody, follow through at some point in time the committee will then make written recommendations to the town board for each of the properties and everything will be done at a town board meeting in public and people will have a chance to come in and address the board and speak about it we're not looking to do anything in a vacuum we're not looking to do anything in a, in a hidden smoke-filled room uh, these are properties that affect everybody and I certainly don't want to do something with a property that may be the wrong decision may not be right for the whole community we, there may be no easy answers. There may, be, there may be things that we all can't agree on a particular property because I'll tell you, since the, Sky, since the Skyview, um, I'm sorry, not Skyview, since the, um, Stryker. the Stryker property first came up, I've had people that are very against the idea of doing anything with it, and I've had people that are very in favor of doing the idea. And we have to balance that. We have to look at a lot of issues. Some of these properties have legal issues, environmental issues that will preclude doing anything. So that's a separate issue. But we want to examine all of it. We don't want to do it just isolated, we want to make the right decisions, we want to listen to everybody who's interested. So we're trying to do it in a new way that's never been done before, and I appreciate your concern, and we're trying to do it that way. Did I Thank answer you. a question about that? Did sure did. Answer, okay. So, um, and, and I commend you on finally doing what I think should have been done in the first place. Thank I, you. I, I want to thank you for, for doing that. But before you go out to your first meeting, mm -hmm. and 
while you're doing your fact gathering and your homework and all the rest, um, have you thought about having a, a little meeting to discuss perhaps what information you should be compiling so that when you go to the public, you're going to the public with, with like the answers, you know, like the stuff that we would want to see answered. Right. Sort well, of like, you know, what are the columns of the spreadsheet to fill in? I understand. We just put the, this together this week. We had the first meeting very preliminarily the other week. People were told that day they were appointed to the committee what the role would be. We're actually meeting again tomorrow. We're going to assign tasks to everybody. We're going to try to get a list of all the properties soon. And that's something we'll do our homework on because I want a meeting in December where we'll have, whether it's spreadsheets or some other format, we'll have all the information out there so people know. There are properties I'm sure that many people don't even know exist in the town or that we own and I didn't know we own and a lot of the staff didn't know we own. So we're going to see what we're going to do with all of them. Some of them may be things nobody will miss. I'll make a prediction. We have the quarry property in Suffering. I don't think anybody would miss it if we sold it and we made some money on it and it became a use that is um, suitable for the zone it's in. And it's in the village of Suffering. It's in Suffering zoning. It's not the town zoning. If we could sell it for something that will make Suffering happy and put some money in our pocket, I think it's a win-win. Right now, it's not a site that's being, well, let me, let me correct that. The only people using it are using it illegally. Over the summer, people were going up there and, and swimming in the lake and endangering themselves. The police had to go once to rescue some kid who got stranded. So there's been no good use of it, and I don't see any potential use the way it is now. There may be a possibility that if it's sold and developed the right way, there could be a park that comes out as part of it that would be, you know, that would be a public park. So that might be an easy one, but there are others that are going to be more of a challenge, and we're going to have to put our heads together and, and decide what to do. So the answer is, will there be an opportunity to make suggestions regarding the data that is being compiled that will be presented to the public? I don't have an answer for you on that. Let me. We're going to meet again internally tomorrow, and we'll go you from there. You certainly uh, anything you want to submit, we will. We're, you're very welcome. We'll be very happy to include that in the event. And so, circling back to this initiative, any of you have suggestions? You have ideas? Uh, there's something that you particularly liked here that was too long to say in a short phrase or statement, and you want to send us a, you know, a longer message? Send us an email, planning at ramapo.org. It's very easy to remember. It goes to my computer, my other staff members' computers, my cell phone. Our staff will get our team, consultant team will get it as well. Send us all the information you can. Send us, you know, if you see something that you like, you're on vacation somewhere, you see an image of a village or a neighborhood that's, that works wonderfully, mm -hmm. just take a picture, send it to planning at rampo.org and say, we should do this. You know, if there's something that you think doesn't work, tell us, I hate this, and send it to us. We need to know as this process evolves. It's a constantly, it's a learning process for us to make sure that we get this right. And I just want to thank our consultant team, especially Jason. And Ben, and everyone else who really works super hard this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank you all for your passion and your patience and your time. I look forward to the next conversation. Yes. No, I want to thank Michael yeah. and Ben as well. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Absolutely. Let's clap for them too. He's got. He lives here. <laughs> hey, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night.